This is episode number 80 of Directly to You. My name is AJ of Fanatics 4. I am joined by Parker of Fanatics 4. Hi, say hi, Parker. Yo, what's up? Hi. <laughs> We're both collectively joined by Pete from Loot Pots. What's up, everybody? He's a cool person from Loot Pots, unlike Max. You can oh. check them out in the description. <laughs> the shade <laughs> begins. Yeah, well, whatever, man. I'm, I'm ready to drag Max on this whole episode because he, like... We used to be friends, and now he just cyber bullies me all the time, you know. So I, I've appreciated Max, you about to say I'll back, stand up AJ. for Max, but I don't know if I can stand for cyber bullying. So he I'm just gonna me play a fair amount of cyber bullying too, you know. So this is, you know what? Uh, but anyway, housekeeping. You can support this show by becoming a member on youtubecom slash for four for four dollars and ninety nine cents a month. You get exclusive emails. You get loyalty badges. You get game time with us from time to time. You get free switch keys. You get priority in games when we stream them and whatnot, whatever that happens. You can do all that same stuff on Twitch for the same price, or you can link your Amazon with your Twitch account and get the Twitch Prime sub and then give it to us. Give us Jeff Bezos free money. All That's right. right. That's the housekeeping. He doesn't need Where it. Where do you guys play? <laughs> <laughs> I saw something recently that said he made uh, like $3,142 a second, which mm. is. That's a lot. That's too much. That's too much money. I mean, yo, just, I mean, that's besides the point. While we're, while, while we're criticizing billionaires, he also like just <laughs> cut a bunch of uh, Whole Foods employees' benefits yeah. so that he could make another cool couple hundred million dollars. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Great, I know dude. we're not allowed to curse on this show, but I have some <laughs> NSFW comments about that guy. <laughs> Indeed. But so yeah. you guys playing any video games? Yes. What are Go for they? It, Pete. What are you playing? Uh, so uh, I know you guys are a Nintendo show, so I'll keep this part brief. I went back to Spider-Man on the PS4 recently, Yo, and I've been knocking nice. out all the... Uh, the DLC that I never got around to playing because I actually I uh, did not platinumed the game the first time around, except for Ooh. one trophy where I needed a few more of the <laughs> oh, challenge man. tokens because I uh -huh. spent them wrong. I like was upgrading my <laughs> abilities, not realizing I needed them for all the suits. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to secure that platinum, finish the DLC, and I'll be ready right when uh, Link's Awakening rolls around. But, I have uh, never in my life platinum a game, and I don't know if I ever will. <laughs> this is uh, actually my first one that isn't like a Telltale game where they just give it to you for beating the game, you know? Yeah, I right. got like, I, was I proud. don't know, I got like, I'm like 90 something percent of the way through the game, at least on the in-game progress. I don't know how far that is for the platinum, um, but still, I will never, ever platinum again i guess <laughs> that includes like that's just not 100 percenting it but like you beat the boss and stuff right you just haven't done side mission yeah, yeah, stuff like, to fill yeah, the last 10 yeah, yeah. i beat yeah, like yeah. the game but there's yeah. still like crimes that i yeah, gotta yeah. like sure, sure. That's that's all honestly it. one of the only things that bugs me about breath of the wild how is dare the fact you that how dare you start a sentence <laughs> like that i it's one of the only no but like so i i love breath of the wild but the fact that the korok seeds count for so much of the percentage in terms of like how much of the game you've oh, completed because yeah. no i've done way. literally everything else except for i've gotten just enough korok seeds to unlock all the weapon slots so that's like half of them that's 450 but so it shows my percentage complete is like you've only completed like 75 percent of this game oh and my like, god nah, you're so Rip. wrong that is Rip. that is a unfair curve what are you doing yeah. to me? <laughs> so yeah that's a that's a thing all right but other than that I love Breath of the Wild, so uh, yeah, yeah Spider-Man, like, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it's been it's been fun. I I loved that game last time around, and I like I'm glad to have had a reason to go back to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the only other game that I've been playing, uh, this is actually the reason I started playing Spider-Man is I've been playing a game called Creature in the Well, uh, which okay. is um, you guys probably saw it during the last couple in, uh, indie directs, where it's mm -hmm. that um, indie game where it's like a puzzle adventure kind of game, but it's all like based on pinball. Mm -hmm. And uh, aesthetically, it's great. I've really been enjoying it, but uh, it a few of the boss fights have like really frustrating difficulty spikes. And I hit a point the other day mm -hmm. where I was just like, I need, I need to play something else. And I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna play Spider Man. And then it got its hooks back in me. So I will see if I get a chance to double back and finish it. But I, I, I really have enjoyed it, and uh, I think it's a game that flew under people's radars a little bit. So mm -hmm. glad to give it a shout out here. In Creature in the Wall, so yeah, it's pinball-based mechanics and stuff. My experience with, like, specifically pinball is I am not great at aiming stuff at places or whatever. But, like, honestly, that's kind of it's tough. why I was hesitant to do Yoku's Island Express. I played the demo, and it was honestly really fun, but I just haven't bit the bullet or whatever. Um, 
But yeah, is that frustrating at all in that game, doing the actual pinball parts of it? Yeah, especially in the beginning it was for me, but uh, I was able to... There's a um, there's a bunch of different weapons you can like find on your journey. There's like a good amount of like hidden okay. doorways and like special stuff you can find. And um, one of... There are like two main weapon types. You have a weapon that you use just for volleying, like if you want to return a ball as it comes at you. And then there's another mm -hmm. one you can use that like... Uh, releases this kind of charge field and it'll catch any balls that are flying by you and then mm -hmm. charge them and you can redirect them. And one mm -hmm. of those weapons has like a laser sight on it and I'm like, you better believe I'm using that every time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Nice. I The other thing I'm kind of curious about with it, I haven't seen much gameplay footage outside of just, I guess, the trailers and stuff like that. And my impression of it art style wise, like it's a cool art style, but it looks like as as Steve from from the Lou Potts or podcast or Potts cast would say, it's very brown <laughs> <laughs> from the bits so that I've seen. <laughs> it is uh, it is very brown in some spots, but it's funny because okay. I actually don't think that um, a lot of the marketing material did that aspect of the game justice because the overworld is very brown because it's like a desert in the middle of a dust storm. Right, uh, but all of the actual levels like each one has like a different color scheme and some of them are like weirdly vibrant like there's a path nice. that uh I, I finished in my last the last time i sat down with it where it was like all neon pinks and purples and stuff so there's like a good amount of color actually once you get into it and i was actually really surprised by how much depth there was to the art style based on what it looked like from the promo material i don't i don't nice. think that the trailers for it have have done its art style and like the tone of its story and stuff justice. Mm -hmm. Actually, it kind of reminds mm -hmm. me a lot of journey mm -hmm. um, in certain ways, That's which is high praise when you're talking about art design. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> yeah. It's a very pretty game actually. Okay. It's too cool. much PlayStation and my Nintendo podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, I didn't want to get down that rabbit hole too far, but you know, I've got, I've got the holy symbols uh -huh. tattooed to my arm. So I got to bring it up every once in a while. <laughs> Oof. They'll Oof, come man. and revoke it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Good so stuff. So replaying yeah. Parker, the, the, I, uh, mine's man. less interesting. <laughs> so let, last week, AJ, you gave me, uh, you were like, hey, do you want this code? And it was a code yep. for Divinity, Divinity Original Sin 2. And oh. I was like, I'll, I guess I'll give it a shot. And I played it like an hour before the podcast last week. I have since played it a lot of hours. I don't and know how I, many, I, but I a lot of them. I have seen. I was like, oh, so, he's hooked. It caught him. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, yeah, something about games like these where it's just like a lot of, it, like every minute you're finding something new and like it, there's little bits of it that, so I played Diablo 3 last year and I really didn't, really enjoy it all that much like it was it was all right but there were bits about it that were kind of annoying to me and something about like there's bits from that game that like the the loot mechanic from diablo kind of made its way over to this which i did not like in diablo but for some reason the way it's in it is in here is like because every battle is kind of i mean it's pretty much D, &D in a video game so mm -hmm. because yeah. every battle is slower paced and lasts longer and is important you know what items you have feels more methodical as far as like, I'm going to pick this item. So you're getting them more slowly than you did in Diablo, which is like, you're just always getting new items. So it feels like none of them are worth anything. It's not like progression at that point. It's just, just getting new stuff. I don't it's know. It's just a grind. Just, you know, yeah. you're just doing it to do it. Yeah, exactly. And that's just, that was frustrating about that. But for some reason, like, yeah, again, even the layout of how it describes the items is a, a lot similar in this, but I mean, otherwise, yeah, the, um, <laughs> there's all sorts of different quests and some of them you'll find, you know, like the first one is you're in a place. You have to escape this place. I won't even say what it is for spoilers or whatever. You have to escape a place. And then you talk to a bunch of different people and they give different clues as far as like, you could do it this way or you could do it this other way. And the dumb old completionist that I am, like I finished it, like got to the point where I could ex escape one of the ways and was like, yeah, but what would it have been like the other way? So then I like went back <laughs> and finished it the other way. So I finished like finished the first chapter five different ways before even moving on to the second chapter. So yeah, it's it's definitely got me hooked. That's going to be a bit of a problem, but it's it's really fun. Um, there's multiplayer in it that I haven't done anything with at all, but it's. It is a bit weird because the way you do multiplayer, it's just one other person, I'm pretty sure, that you can do it with. And if you, um, they either you join their campaign or they join your campaign, but you can't like 
have save files across both of yours pretty much like somebody's mm. the host for a story so if you know like pete if you so and it's I like knew, marvel to middle line yeah right if we knew for sure that like pete and i are just always going to play together and this is essentially we're just playing D yeah, together you know knew. then that works great <laughs> um but then otherwise if we you know if you wanted to play together and then also have your own separate profiles you'd be going through the game twice so you know all that's uh, a little confusing on that front but all that to say Man, it's really good. <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> it sounds like you're really into it, man, which is cool. I, I only ever played the original Divinity on uh, on okay. Steam. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's a very compelling like hook. Like I feel like it, it reminds me a lot of um the uh the old like CRPGs like Baldur's Gate and stuff, but specifically yep. the ones that were on the PS2. Like uh, Interesting. Okay. the Dark Alliance series, it kind of reminds me of that. Like if you play it mm. on a console, like it has that very similar, like, you know, mm-hmm. isometric, like you're going, you're grinding, you're looting. There's a cool little story, heavy D&D vibes. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like it's a good it's a good match for Switch. Yeah, I told my DM, I was like, oh, I'm playing a, a game that I think you'd enjoy. And he was like, oh, what is it? And told him what it was. He was like, that's the second best CRPG release in the last decade. And the first mm-hmm. being apparently Pillars of Eternity 2, which I barely even know anything about, but I'm a lot more interested in now. So there you go. There's that. <laughs> One thing uh, I, I will say, if you are interested in learning more about Pillars of Eternity, um, mm-hmm. Jason Schreier from Kotaku, his book, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, has a chapter mm. about its creation that is fascinating. Never played the game, nice. but the story behind it is very cool. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Uh, I dabbled a little bit in some SNES games, but like honestly just kept going back to Divinity. <laughs> so <laughs> nice just where well, I am. I'm sure the developer will be happy to hear about that because they yes. did ask me to keep them updated on our thoughts. Nice. So I will do sure just that. <laughs> I will email them. Yeah, send them a link to the show. It's like glowing reviews, guys. <laughs> um, hello, people from. Hi this game <laughs> how are you doing I'm, I'm worried about how much i played this game this week out of 10 that's my review <laughs> uh, yeah pretty much so, so i've been playing smash brothers mm-hmm. i'm trying nice. trying to get trying to get good for locals i couldn't go last week because stuff happened uh people got busy and whatnot <laughs> right so I was, I'm, I'm trying to get good playing against a lot of people that i know are also good and trying to get good I'm mm-hmm. uh, figuring out Pokemon matchups. I had a revelatory moment today where I was like, oh, that's how I fight that character. <laughs> what and character there, was it? I'm very curious. Rosalina now. and Luma. I oh, hated, they're the worst. I hated them because like Luma always Luma's just gets annoying. In the way. Luma yes, always absolutely. gets in the way. But yep. with Pokemon Trainer, Ivysaur is a hard counter, like hard counter. I thought that he would be useless. Uh, mm-hmm. Or she, I don't know. Well, Ivysaur, everybody <laughs> calls Ivysaur something different. They would be useless um, because, like, Razorleaf couldn't, or I thought Razorleaf wouldn't be able to get in because one, it's too slow. Two, mm-hmm. she has like a absorption thing, but that is too slow. So if you Razorleaf and then oh. she does that, and you're close enough, you can go in and counter. Very um, nice. So Ivysaur is a good counter against uh, Rosalina, and that's the thing that I'm finding with Pokemon Tra- just generally. It's so hard. To play this game because <laughs> it's like so much of it like because so much of the smash brothers characters are good like even the ones that are bad are yeah. good if you know how to play them and if you don't know how to play against them you're going to get effed like little mac even if you don't understand what the strat is against little mac he's going to just destroy you yeah um, i feel like the barrier of like entry for being really good at ultimate is super high because it's like oh cool there's like 60 viable characters like yeah, yeah. There's so and many matchups like, you need to learn how to plan for. <laughs> yeah, and with mm-hmm. Pokemon, it's a Pokemon trainer. It's multiplied by three because I have to figure yeah. out. Okay, how do I fight each? Even if it's not a Pokemon, like because there's always going to be like the obvious Pokemon out of the three. That's like okay, this Pokemon is not going to work against this character. Mm-hmm. But you have to at least know. Okay, what can I do to stay alive long enough to switch to the Pokemon that mm-hmm. is good against this character? Just check on Bulbapedia and see what their weaknesses are. Yeah, there's just- that type chart. <laughs> And then you've, I mean, you got to cover there you it go. pretty much. Yeah, so. just got to check out their special attack stats and their special defense and speed yeah. and all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good, good. Can Thank you give you. them Thank a choice scarf? That. that will solve the issue. <laughs> also true. Also true. Brilliant. I don't think I can do that. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Pikachu Have you can get a, a focus band. I think a focus band. Oh yeah, as uh, one I of his. I guess that is what that headband is, right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I as never one, thought about that. 
I'm upset that they didn't do that with Pokemon Trainer. And I used to hate, like, hate the Pokemon Trainer alts. Uh, I'm finding it's probably because in Brawl, Pokemon Trainer, just all of them looked ugly. Like, they looked disgusting <laughs> in that game. Uh, and, I mean, part of it is because they're, like, less expressive, but their eyes just look like painted on <laughs> that's funny because in my mind they still look back then like they look in like ultimate now, now just because yeah. you know i mean it's the same crash bandicoot effect where you're like what, what are you talking about remaster that's what it looked like in the first place yeah and then after you know seeing footage of the insane, yeah, insane like, trilogy and going back and you're like goo that was yeah. man ps1 was was rough <laughs> it was a long time ago <laughs> it was it really was but yeah all of that to say i don't like the fact that they don't have like alts like pikachu and pichu and julie every other yeah. pokemon well lucario and Incineroar don't mm -hmm. either um but i'm upset that they don't have like hats and, and scarves i really wish they would just break them up already like i no. like no i, I, I no. don't i don't no. want to like no like Nothing against Pokemon Trainer, no. right? But like, I'm gonna let you guys settle this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if each of them was a separate character, like they are they in Project so M, they would be so much worse. They would be so much worse. No, the they could huge. have better skins and stuff, man. No, no, man, no. They would. It's not worth it because they would be such a not a good character. Because like, like Ivysaur and Squirtle by themselves would suck. Like, being able to switch and have this whole flow chart of, like, okay, Squirtle, you build up damage. Ivysaur, you're an advantage. You kill him. Oh, you can't kill him? You have high percent? Charizard, you be heavy and hit them with a, anything and they'll die. So it's like, if you miss any piece of that pu uh, puzzle, you'll struggle at one of those. Well, let me throw this out. Thanks. Regardless, either side of your... All the things. Squirtle, Squad, Squirtle. I mean... Where is that's he? That's pretty much all we know. <laughs> That's, That's all true. we need to know. You know, put the glasses true. on them. Come just on, just put them on. Like, even That's if true. Ivysaur and Charizard get the glasses too, just as yeah. like they get circle glasses, like the you know yeah. the goons. Right, I would, I would love, love that. <laughs> they need to do. I'm so saying, good. I, all I'm saying is we don't need to give them excuses. We don't got to say like, oh, well, <laughs> no, they're split up. No, 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 no. We can have a good character that also has cool alts. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Especially if it's just sunglasses. That's not hard. Come on, Nintendo. Get it together. Yeah, man. Give him the sunglasses. Sakurai, you're not doing enough. That's totally a joke. Yeah, <laughs> man. Give us, give don't us even, more don't even play. For each Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even say that with, like, I people. I just know people would be mad at me for having said it. So I was like, uh, no, I'm, I'm taking it back. To be fair, there's going to be people that are going to be mad at you for taking it back. I mean, you know what? People are going to be mad at everything. Sometimes people are mad at so many things that they might even be mad at paid DLC in games. Um, <laughs> unless you guys have more games that you're playing right now. In which no. case, I won't segue into news. We're segueing into news! <laughs> Boom. Master. All right, there we go. You um, messed up the, the segue by not being confident. No, nah, man, it's, you uh, just cut it's it, meta. Cut us off. If you're like, if you're like uh, I don't care. If you, you just got to be like, I don't care if you're playing anything else. You're no longer. Because but here's the thing. I do I'm care. cutting it off. Because I'm a nice <laughs> human being. All right, all right. We're not just going to sit here and lie to the people. <laughs> so pay DLC in Luigi's Mansion 3. Um, so that's a news thing. We Honestly, we don't have a whole lot of news specifically on it, but um, let me read what we got here. It does and exist. Then, uh, it does, yes. So uh, the article specifically says, Luigi's Mansion 3 received its official Switch eShop page yesterday, allowing fans to preload the game. Tucked away inside the description is an interesting note about DLC. While no specifics have been provided, paid DLC is now confirmed. Nintendo and Next Level Games are planning more content for the Scare Scraper and Scream Park modes. Scare Scraper has players racing the timer to clear various ob objectives on a series of floors. Meanwhile, the Scream Park mode party mode involves two to eight players battling against each other as a Luigi team and a Gooigi team while competing to see who can defeat the most ghosts, collect the most coins, or break the most targets. Oh, shit, break the target mode. Damn. Apparently, yeah. So Scream Park this for is context, where it moved. yeah. <laughs> that was the one um that was the one we saw in this last direct was right. the scream park one where the one in i think the e3 direct was the scare scraper mode mm -hmm. pretty sure so yeah i think you're right yeah because that one is also in um uh the last one dark two mm, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah and everybody's like is the party mode going to be online multiplayer and it's like it'd be weird if it wasn't because scare scraper or at least wh whatever it was called in luigi's mm -hmm. mansion 2 was online multiplayer and that's on the 3ds and the 3ds is garbage fam <laughs> <laughs> 
Damn, that's a hot take. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technologically, it's not. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, yeah, I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah. It runs and on hopes and I mean. prayers. I don't necessarily mean the game. It runs on it. hopes and prayers. It's yeah. There you go. It's true. It's true. Um, but yeah. So, so what do we think about all that? I want to know what it what it is. Like, is it going to mm. be like playable? Con- like more maps or something like that? Because that would just split the player base. But if they do like uh, instead of everybody having to be on a Gooigi and a Luigi team, you could be Mario and Gario. <laughs> 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 Guario? <laughs> I do, yeah. I feel the same way where, like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I don't really fully understand the significance or whatever of Scarescraper and Screen Park. Like, I think they'll be, to me, they very much seem like extra side fun modes on top of the regular game that already yeah. exists, which is the main attraction. So, like, if the paid DLC has more to the main game and then also stuff to extra stuff into these ones cool that i i can understand that at least but like i just can't quite imagine unless it's like five dollar dlc for mm. like extra extra something or others I, I i don't know which i mean we can brainstorm i guess even what that is but just like full price dlc like we've seen for other switch games i can't imagine if it's not for the main <laughs> game here which yeah, how do we even feel about that i don't know I can so, see them doing like multiplayer stuff and it, if it's like under ten dollars or ten dollars, ten dollars yeah. or less, yeah. because if you pre-order the game, uh, there's a promotion that you get, what, 600 coins. So you already are a sixth of the way there. Yeah, that's <laughs> not too bad. This DLC. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll throw out a controversial take here and say that um, I, I don't think this is a bad thing at all. Uh, I, I think that like. We as gamers have been trained to be very like gun shy about DLC and like reasonably so. Um, it, there's been plenty of companies that do a piss poor job of it. Uh, but I think when you look at like what Nintendo does, I, I think they've been p- pretty good about DLC for the most part. I don't think they've ever asked money for something where I felt like it was uh, where I didn't get bang for my buck, right? And um, I think when it comes to multiplayer editions, I I think it's actually a really positive thing that they announced this because you look at a game like Luigi's Mansion 3, right, where they want to introduce these online modes and, you know, you don't really want to go for that, uh, the the old school single player game that has multiplayer modes model where someone buys a $60 game and they play the multiplayer mode for a little bit and then everybody abandons it Mm because it's not getting regular updates and there's no reason to keep playing. Mm -hmm. And with this, if they do decide to throw out like a season pass or do regular updates to the game that enables you to continue the conversation around Luigi's Mansion 3 and to keep the content coming, where if you are a person who plays the game and falls in love with that multiplayer mode, the DLC is actually a good thing for you because it means that they're going to keep making content. And as much as everybody like gets, I think, upset about like, I already paid $60 for the game. Why do I have to pay for more stuff? Like if they're continuing development on the game, they got to pay those people somehow. They can't just release content for free because they want to. Right. I mean, you're in the perfect place for that take. Because I have several videos where I say the same thing about multiple <laughs> <Yeah>. games. <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying, man. It's like, you know, like, I, I get it, right? We all mm-hmm. love video games. Video games are an art form. And you want so people have this very, like, weird attitude sometimes about money for art. But it's like, Nintendo's a business. And if you want content for Luigi's Mansion 3, after it comes out, you got to pay for it. How and dare you all things make me consi- pay for things I love? <laughs> how, right? dare how dare you, you pay for work? <laughs> All things considered, I think if I, I guess all that it is, is like, I just can't think of what would what they would put in it. Partly, again, because I don't know, like, I don't have much of a mindset of what exactly Scarescraper and Screen Park modes are outside of just yeah. what they've shown us. But I think if I mean, if they can come up with stuff that's good enough to make that worthwhile, then 100 percent, it's better for it to be in the multiplayer stuff and have a full fledged game that's packed into the single player thing because then also for longevity and whatnot like when you get the cart you know in 15 years or whatever when the switch isn't doing updates anymore or however that whole thing works um then the cart will still have you know the full game on it the single player game and just won't have the multiplayer stuff enabled or something along those lines which is like that's awesome um but yeah i guess it's just with the multiplayer stuff i it, it would be really interesting if this does become a multiplayer heavy game which like I was not anticipating at all. Like that's for me, that was, that would come kind of out of left field 
Because those really, to me, just seem like, you know, kind of Mario Party side things. But if that's if that's a focus of it, then that's awesome. I'm just curious what it is. <laughs> yeah, if it's like a, the Last of Us sort of situation where, like, generally... Wait, I'm bringing up PlayStation now. Uh, or <laughs> uh, generally... I poisoned the well. <laughs> <we're> g- <laughs> the creature in the well at that. Oh, my God. Uh, that's me, I'm the creature! <laughs> <laughs> so so like with games like that usually like pizza okay, said, you're weak to you tech. jump in the multiplayer like that and you're like ah oh, this is neat or this sucks i'm never touching it again mm-hmm. right uh, but with the last of us i felt like people stuck with that for a lot hmm, longer because okay. it was more like in line with the value of the main game um, right so i mean all things considered like I, i'm trying to think of other games that are similar to that too right now like I feel like it's the opposite kind of of Splatoon, where Splatoon is primarily a, a multiplayer game, but then yeah. like the single player actually turned out to be really good, and mm. that's what we got the DLC for. I mean, obviously there's free DLC of patches and you know more weapons and stuff like that that came to the multiplayer, but um, if this is the opposite, that would just be interesting, where the the side thing is the multiplayer, but that's what gets the paid DLC in this opposite way of Splatoon did. Yeah, like I just don't know what the business model would be. Uh, for something like this, if it's uh, you know, like more towers <laughs> or more skyscrapers, right. yeah, or right. Like it could right. just be d- like, different maps. I think the other thing that came to mind for me was um, you know, in the uh, whatever the one is where there's like the eight player mode, mm-hmm. like they showed all the different versions of Luigi. You could sell different Luigi skins, like right. you know, you called out like oh, like maybe Mario or Wario or Peach or whoever mm-hmm. else, and you throw other characters in the mix, like. There's things you could do like that that I feel yeah. like make sense if you do them in like packs of how like maybe for five bucks you get five skins or whatever. You know, this is where Nintendo- we're going to see why Peach and why Daisy <laughs> is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo is doing like an interesting job. We talked about it uh, two weeks ago, maybe with um like Kirby Clash, whatever yeah, the one, yeah, the yeah, new yeah, one yeah, on the yeah, Switch, yeah. the, the mm-hmm. free to play one, like that and Pokemon Quest having essentially microtransactions but a limited quantity of them Mm -hmm. nintendo's been doing an interesting job with that where it's like the most you can pay is 40 dollars. like once you paid that 40 bucks i can't see them doing that with this i mean i'm thinking skins though like if there's a limited number of skins as opposed to fortnite where like you could pay for a billion years and then you'd still be getting stuff you know or whatever yeah i mean it could be like a smash brothers sort of thing where mm-hmm. when everything's all said and done, they're like, buy the Scott scare scraper pack or whatever yeah, for 20 right. bucks. Or, or you like, buy it all individually for like marginally more money. Yep. Yeah. And we've, we've seen a bunch of different Nintendo games get a season pass where there's a DLC plan. Right. Mm-hmm. And like work for Breath of the Wild. Like, I don't see why you couldn't do that with this game where you just yeah. have a similar kind of trajectory to like a Splatoon where it's like every month or every other month for a year they're going to put out mm-hmm. skins or new maps or whatever so there's like a little bit of a reason for you to go back you know mm-hmm. until they're ready to talk about whatever the next big thing is <laughs> cuz i think for this like by contrast or if it is like new towers or whatever like you said uh aj if it's new towers then that does beg the question like yeah does that fracture the audience to where there's like only the people that bought the dlc pack can play on this tower and then everybody else is playing on this one and then that means you're waiting forever to find other people that can play on that tower or something like this actually how does that work come to think of it in um in mario kart 8 on the wii u how did that work so I on don't the know. wii u <laughs> they had they segregated everything where okay. it's like there's the lobby for or not lobby but playlists essentially mm-hmm. of all the like in-game like like on the disc i was about to say cart on the mm-hmm. disc <laughs> uh maps and stuff that you can play on there and then there's a separate playlist for the one with the first pack of dlc and then another one second and so then if another you wanted to play combined. okay interesting so like you would be only grouped together with the people that paid the same amount that you did for like right. the same things so yeah. i mean yeah, I mean, if there's enough people playing it, that would be fine. You know, if that's what it is, if yeah. you actually get more content to play. But otherwise, if there's not enough people playing it, that kind of sucks. Um, I think, then I think like, it's gonna it's gonna have to come down to what the install base looks like, and you know, mm-hmm. it's yep. interesting though because you do end up in this weird position eventually, where like you are gonna splinter the audience, but like you have to ask the question: is like how many people are going to be playing Luigi's Mansion 3's multiplayer months after release who also wouldn't be interested in new content? Right, right, right. right. 
and it's, and I mean, it's it, goes the other, it goes the other way around too right because the people that would pay for content like that are inherently going to be more interested in the game overall anyway right um so which is why cosmetics true. are a good solution because a skin yeah. can show up in anybody's game yeah mm-hmm. exactly and yeah. then it's kind of like characters in smash brothers even yeah. though even that right is like, exactly mm-hmm. <laughs> even that they're weird about because if you save a replay the replays mm-hmm. are code they're not like a video so if you don't have the oh, character that's true then the game can't execute the match because you don't have the character to do that with. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's a really so good funny. point. How does it? How does Smash deal with um, if, like, you know, if I have Joker and I want to play on the, um, like, Joker stage, the Persona stage, will it let you, if you don't have the DLC, actually, a better analogy, the other way around, since I don't have the DLC, like, would it let me play on Spiral Mountain or something like that? It will if you're playing against somebody that has it okay, and they gotcha. pick it. Um, which I found something interested, interesting about Smash Brothers mm-hmm. uh, that I tweeted about, sort of. <laughs> so I have other account, other people's accounts on my Switch. Uh, my aunt's account is on my oh, Switch. Oh, yeah. And I was, <laughs> I was bored, and I was like, I'm going to get Pokemon Trainer in Elite Smash and see if it works, because I saw that her top GSP was a character, because I just started this file, and it doesn't have any characters on it, and I didn't do anything, so nobody yeah. should have any GSP, period. Right. Um, and her highest character is a character that she actually uses, and it was at, like, 4.2 million. So mm-hmm. I was like, is GSP linked to your account? <laughs> so then I unlocked Elite Smash with Pokemon Trainer, and then I went to her, and I was like, is Pokemon Trainer an Elite Smash? Because she doesn't even have an Elite Smash, like, period. Mm, right. And I was like, is... is is that unlocked on your, <laughs> on your Switch? <laughs> and then she checked and it was like, it is. And I was like, yo, I'm That's gonna hilarious. like leave that. It's gonna be like my graffiti where it's like, I'm gonna taunt <laughs> people. You're like, now you're in a dilemma. It's like, do you wanna have the bragging rights of being an Elite Smash mm-hmm. and have to stare at Pokemon Trainer there for the rest of your life and everybody else is blacked out? Or do you wanna tank his score so you have your favorite character there? <laughs> that's really funny. But yeah, that's a little uh, non sequitur. <laughs> It's a good one. Yeah. DLC. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Nintendo has been doing a good job with DLC recently, so I I hope they keep it up. I don't expect that they won't, all things considered, except for the games that just for some reason don't have DLC, like Mario Party. And for oddly Rip, dude, enough, Super Mario Rip. Maker 2 hasn't gotten anything yet. Also weird. But, that's, uh, but I mean, that game hasn't been out that Yeah, exactly. And so uh, I think the big omission is like, why did Odyssey not have real dlc like they added right, the you can make thing. mario odyssey 2 man that's my yeah. legitimate thought is they at some point they were just like you know what we've got a lot of ideas we're just gonna make mario odyssey 2 because even Which, like with the i'm good with that absolutely <laughs> me too that could, that, that could be worse it could have zero story in it all all that i care you know like and whatever it's just because at this point, it's just like, oh, uh, Mario wants to travel around some more places. And then you're like, all right, cool. Mario's going to travel around some more places. You're going to platform, and it'll be great. Um, Next, Mario's going to get shoes with eyes. <laughs> <laughs> His name's going to be Booty. I, I love the idea of Mario just, like, swiftly kicking someone, and then his <laughs> shoe takes over their body. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Man, I like it a lot. I also like a lot that the Switch Lite is coming out for other people's benefit, not really for mine. Um, and that's the thing that's Ashley's happening. Rip yellow Switch Lite. Rip, dude. That's right. Yep. Um, long story short there, we were going to get my wife a Switch Lite, but then instead we ended up getting me uh, the newer Switch, and she was like, I'd rather have your old one anyway, because then I can put it on the TV if I want to. And I was like, all right, cool. So Ashley did not get a Switch Lite, Rip. nevertheless. Um, oh, but yeah, damn. it came out. Tomorrow for us here, yesterday for you guys there listening, because we record on Thursdays now. So, uh, yeah, that's the thing. And then the article-ish thing with it, which isn't quite an article, but um, it's coming out, getting reviews. And then just wanted to go through this. So Matt Piscatella, who's a sales analyst kind of guy, um, he's yeah. in charge of the NPD numbers, I believe. Yeah. Um, and so he's... Uh, and he, as opposed to the, like... Uh, What's that other guy's name? Something Practor, Michael Michael Practor or something like that. Pactor. Who gets Pactor, mm, who gets yeah. things wrong yep. all the time. And it's like comically wrong. This guy actually is on top of it and knows it. Yeah, thing. Matt, so, Matt's good. He's worth following on Twitter. 
Yep, absolutely. So he he tweeted out, I'm currently forecasting 2019 US Nintendo Switch unit sales to be the highest for any individual hardware platform since the Xbox 360 in 2011 with potential upside to that. Damn. I don't know what that last part means. With potential upside to that? With potential um, upside. Maybe to that. it's a potential to be higher. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's what I that's what I would guess from context clues there. It's just like there's no way this has a Pokemon bundle, dude. There's no way this isn't <laughs> selling like crazy. Like the Switch is like I would be shocked if they don't don't beat that twenty plus million or whatever from last uh, mm. fiscal year. I would be shocked with the lineup we have this year. In addition to the Switch Lite coming out, like that's just like the. If it doesn't happen now, it will literally never happen. I think the the real X factor on this here is everybody who's already kind of in the Switch conversation, like everybody who's listening to this podcast, pretty much, like probably is not going to buy it. And that's yeah, no, like, it's not, it's not really targeted towards the people that already have a Switch. So the real X factor is all the people that don't have a Switch, is this something that like would appeal to them in a way that the switch didn't already, which like when I went to target to look for the updated switch, uh, whenever that was a couple months ago, um, I asked the guy there and he was like, well, uh, I don't know if we have that, but, uh, it's something, 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 the switch light, whenever that comes out, I'm going to be buying that. And I was, and he was the kind of guy that I was like, oh, I figured he would have already bought a switch. Like just seems <laughs> like good old Nintendo gamer or whatever. Um, so the fact that it was like another guy about, you know, in his mid 20s or something like that, that didn't have a switch and was going for a switch light. I was like, there really could be a lot of people that I would have thought had already jumped on board, but just haven't yet. And then not to mention think, like parents with kids and stuff, too. I think yeah. the two things that would be a selling factor for this is that a lot of people don't seem to understand that there is the updated regular switch. <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> uh, like when I went to GameStop to get my uh, switch battery booster. Uh, <laughs> um, I was like, yeah, I want the new switch. And then he was like, what? <laughs> I, was like, the one with the, I was like the one with the red box. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, okay, let me look in the back and see if we have it. He was like, you, and then he came back out. He was like, you know what? Show me a picture. So I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and I was like, I don't like it's here. Like, this is what it looks like. It's the one with the red box. He's like, oh, okay. And then got the, the switch uh, out of the thing. But switch light is just easy verbiage. It's like the switch light. Oh, OK. Yeah, we have one of those. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, I mean, I like, think that. Go ahead, oh, Pete. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, also, the fact that it's $100 cheaper yep. and all the different, like, you know, pretty colors and whatnot. And some people that don't play, even though I think it's weird to, like, off the bat say, I'm never going to dock it. So let me just completely wall that option off for, if, <laughs> for whatever reason. I have a reason to dock it, you know. Mm -hmm. um there are uh, a fraction of people that feel that way so like why not save a hundred dollars and also benefit from not being able to dock i guess <laughs> true pete what were you gonna say <laughs> yeah so I, I i definitely think that that what you guys are laying out there is like are really salient points and i, th I think that the switch light is like absolutely going to be a success and it, it was so funny to me to see how many just angry you know, crappy little, like, you know, fanboys were freaking out about this thing and being mm -hmm. like, who is this for? No one wants this. No one needs this. Man, it's the exact same narrative as when they announced the 2DS. And guess what? The 2DS sold like bangers because <laughs> I think that the people that you guys just lined out, that's who the market for this thing is, right? If you're somebody who's been on the fence, because like the guy that you laid out there, right? I know tons of gamers who primarily play on either PlayStation or Xbox or PC and are like, I want to switch and like, I want to play Zelda. I want to play smash, but like, I don't know. Like it just hasn't, I haven't had that reason yet. And a hundred dollars cheaper. That's the reason. If you were right. somebody who, especially if you were like, don't buy Nintendo home consoles, but you owned a DS and a three DS, which is like most people last generation, <laughs> right? Yeah. I think there are a lot of people like that who are like, I don't need to dock it. I have no interest in docking it. I only want to play Nintendo exclusives. I'm fine playing that in handheld mode. I did it the last two generations. Why not? Right. And I think if you're yeah, like a yeah. college kid and, and you don't have money, a hundred dollars is a lot. That's a game and a half for yeah. you. True. 
I think also like the gift market is going to be a huge selling factor for this, not mm-hmm. only just because of parents that need to buy two for their kids and that kind of thing, but also I think like people like me who are like l- hoping for a bargain or something like that and feel like when this comes out, you know, like, so say, you know, either a husband for his wife or a wife for a husband or something where it's like, man, I, I really wish that I could get you a switch, but I just like, we just can't quite cough up the th- $300 and then now it feels like it finally went on sale and I can get you a switch now and even right. if the hus- the spouse is you know a little bit disappointed like oh I kind of wanted the original one but oh well whatever they've already bought it <laughs> so like yeah I mean I point, don't think I don't think like yeah. in like in your scenario right I don't think mm-hmm. Ashley would have been bummed out no. if she wasn't able to dock the no. switch the, the I think is, that like more than anything it would have just been like I wasn't going to play this as much as you would anyway, so there's no <laughs> reason to have like this fully dedicated three hundred dollar thing. Yep. Um, I think in the scenario think- you described too, though, you could also just use cloud saves. Like if, if she really wanted to play on the dock, like le- like um my uh, my girlfriend Sarah and I, we both have our own switches that are original mm-hmm. ones. But like if she like she's playing Fire Emblem right now, if she wanted to play Fire Emblem docked, she could always just put her save right back on her account, which originated right. on my my switch. Mm-hmm. And we don't play on TV. No big deal. Yep. True. In a multi-switch household, I think the Switch Lite really makes sense. Like, especially if you have kids. Especially yeah. if you yeah. have a main Switch unit that's your Switch. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, my kids want to play whatever. They're, they want to play Fortnite. I don't want them to use my Switch. Or I don't want to mm-hmm. share my Switch. It's $200. Mm-hmm. Like, that's or like easy. If you're on the road with them a lot or something like that. And, like, they want to be playing stuff, you know, like... And yeah, then, you want to leave the like, main switch kids. at home. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, because, like, say you have three kids, right? and the, Or two kids, even. And mm-hmm. you want to buy a switch for yourself. And then you think, okay, I'm going to buy a switch for them. If you bought them two regular switches just for the cost of those two, there's a switch light in between that. <laughs> so, like, if, you, if yeah. you buy two switches, that's $600. That's three switch lights. Yeah. Right, exactly. And I, I honestly, I think like that, that exact scenario is the kind of thing that we as 20 something like insular <laughs> video game nerds who have podcasts are like, yeah. oh, like we don't think of that consumer, but that's a lot of people. And that's mm-hmm. a huge, that's Nintendo's handheld market, man. Like yep. I, my cousin who is in her now, like, you know, late thirties or whatever, when her kids were both younger and they both had DSs, right? Like she definitely would have went for something like this. They would have had a main switch that they kept docked in their living room as a home console. Both of the kids would have had their own mini switch. And guess what? That's one household that bought three switches. Yep. So what are our guesses? Uh, we're just going to put it all online, guys. Here it goes. For Q4 2019 switch sales worldwide or whatever. Like We, we won't know until January 30th of next year or whatever. But uh, what's, what's your guesses? What are we at right now? I need that number before that I can make a guess. That is a good question. I'll pull it up. Cool, because I know you've got it handy. Um, I think last year, for what it's worth, I want to say uh, Q4 2018 was like 10.7 million or something like that in that one quarter. I could totally be off on that, but I'm pretty sure that's it in was the ballpark. somewhere around there. It's like, uh, yeah. is that what you want me to pull? I thought you wanted me to pull up the like the worldwide. Total. I think that's what Pete's yeah, asking is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what the I want to know, because I, I, I want to guess based on how many we've already sold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like where so we're the, at, even for this year would be good. Yeah. The worldwide total and it just generally is three point uh, thirty six point eighty seven million. OK. OK. As and then, of June. So that'll be yeah. more by some amount as of September. By uh, now, it's probably already like an additional five, six million, maybe even. Yes, it, I would say it's probably at like forty, like low, like high forties, low forty-one millions mm-hmm. somewhere yeah. around there. Um, I think that's probably a safe bet, mm-hmm. or think, like maybe a little south of that. Yeah, I, I I'd probably holiday, guess a little more like thirty-eight thousand. Pro- I mean, thirty million. How dare you say thirty-eight thousand? Um, <laughs> I think I think holiday bare minimum. They're shifting like. 11 million of these like not the thing switch, is not switch lights but just combined, combined. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think i think that's the thing right is like when you look at nintendo's projections like over the last two years like a big issue for why they haven't hit them has been stock and the whole yeah. screen issue has been resolved we mm-hmm. have an old version of the switch that like they're still like they're putting out all these really cheap bundles to get rid of them 
And we have the new version of the Switch that people like you guys have already gone out and bought and upgraded. And mm -hmm. they have the Switch Lite. So, like, I I think I think it's going to be up there. I really do. And, and I think, mm -hmm. like, this holiday season is going to be huge for them because of Pokemon. And Pokemon sells Nintendo hardware historically. Yep. So I think like 10, 11, maybe even 12 million is not unreasonable. I'm going to throw out a specific number that's going to be too much, but whatever. 13.2 uh, million in Q4. Okay. So we won't know until January, but... Right, write all these down, and then you guys got to have me back in January. Whoever wins the bet, we we will buy a pizza or something. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> you guys are a lot closer for the pizzas than I. <laughs> hey man, the internet exists. It sure does. All right, Reverse so. Pizza. All right, so I'm saying thirteen point one. AJ, Pete, what's your specific numbers? Specific okay. numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll say twelve point. Uh, twelve point seven. <laughs> For some reason, my mind went to twelve point four, so I'm going to say twelve point four. Perfect. All okay. right, we'll see what happens. Because we'll last see. year, I think it was like eight. It's like eight million something. And it, I think it's going to be a night because we had Smash last year, but yeah, Pokemon man, this is very true. We surely do. Can't beat the and we also have Surf fetched. That we know about now. Who's a Pokemon? Speaking of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Better segue. Uh, you almost did it. You're almost there. I I have uh, never man, I cared got... about Farfetch'd in my life. Until now. Do you care about him now, though? <laughs> Until now. <laughs> okay. Because, like, I've always liked Farfetch'd because I love the Pokemon that are terrible. Yes. Like, I, I, I think it's so funny that in a game where, like, there are so, like, like it's it's stats. The whole game is stats. Like, and they set the stats. Why even make Pokemon that are objectively garbage? <laughs> and like, yeah. I it's I honestly I think it's one of the best things about the meta game because like, and I'm gonna be a real dork and talk about competitive Pokemon here for a second. But like, oh, do it. The tiers are what make it so fun because when you get into like the low weird tiers, there's so much just like random, strange, zany strategies that got pulled out of nowhere. So like. I love I love Farfetch'd and the fact that like they pulled him out and they're like no all right listen this Pokemon that we established in the first game as being specifically rare because it's terrible at fighting and tastes <laughs> delicious and now they're like okay but he turns into a like crazy awesome mm -hmm. Arthurian knight with a lance <laughs> forget about it that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's crazy to me that we I mean, we recently even got a question uh, for the Q&A section of uh, this very podcast, probably like two episodes ago, maybe mm -hmm. last episode where uh, somebody was like, do people eat Pokemon? And this oh, is yeah. like as close to a prepackaged meal in Pokemon <laughs> as it gets. People definitely eat Pokemon. It happens. <laughs> like, here's the thing, man. And you look at the original Pokemon, right? And my biggest gripe with this series is that when it became a worldwide phenomenon, they sanded off all the weird, rough, mean edges in everything mm -hmm. except the Pokedex. Like, the Pokedex <laughs> entries are yeah. still yeah. nightmare fuel. But, like, <laughs> the original game, it's explicit that people eat Pokemon. It definitely happens. And now I mean, to be oh, fair, no, they do that in the newer together, games, too. No, people eat Pokemon. Nah, I, I, I think that they, they're, they're definitely, they get dark now <laughs> with the lore stuff. I think they're less so with, like, how people talk about Pokemon. Like, if they're, they're not going to say, like, oh, yeah, like, I just saw Ekans murder a, a Rattata. Like, they're not going <laughs> to say that. But they, they do have moments of, like, the fact that even uh, in, like, Pokemon died in the war. <laughs> I yeah, like but listen, in the it. original game, in the original game, it is made explicitly clear people eat Pokemon. There was a recent great war and <laughs> yeah. a lot of people died. Mm -hmm. and but it wasn't a plot point like in uh, Pokemon X and Y. It's a plot point that there was a war. And yeah, the but the whole thing, thing it's like, oh, one Pokemon dude. died, and it was super sad. It's like, <laughs> dude, one of the gym leaders in the first game is a war veteran, and that dude has PTSD. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I think These even, like, thinking about, as far as the people eating Pokemon and stuff, in Detective Pikachu, even in that, which is like, oh, the Pokemon just working with us, and blah, 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 blah. And there's, like, a field, or, like, a ranch that has Bufalants just, like, uh -huh. hang, you know, 
being buffaloes the same way the buffaloes would be that we straight up eat in real life. Yep. What do you think they're doing? They're, I mean, there's no way. They're not just being like, you can just hang out inside of these wooden <laughs> fences if you here, want. Dude. You know, no big deal. Don't worry about it. No, like, yeah, you're getting eaten. So <laughs> people, look, here's, the, here's the real question. Let me posit it this way. Mm -hmm. Canonically, people eat meat in the Pokemon universe, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Have you ever seen a, an animal in the Pokemon universe? Eat right. another Pokemon? No, just like, have you seen an animal that's not a Pokemon? Yeah, I mean, it's oh, like... Oh, uh, I think there was like a bird or only, something. Literally, the only example I can think of is I think in the original season of the anime, when they go to the yeah. Cerulean gym, I think there are actual fish in the aquarium. Otherwise, none. So <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like, like, even if there were like just regular animals, they would retcon them into actual Pokemon later. Yeah, like, if there was like a bird, it's like, oh no, that was like a rare bird Pokemon that just didn't show up in this region yet. <laughs> Can we I'm talk saying, for a man. second about how cool it was that in the first episode, by the way, Ash saw Ho -Oh, yeah. and like it just wasn't even a Pokemon for the longest time. Like, I just thought about that now, and like that's just fun yeah. to like that kind of thing. They should do more of that stuff where like throw something like in now. It's like that's do, not a thing. They always do a little bit of that. Like, there's always at least one Pokemon, at least in anime, yeah. where it's like, this Pokemon I mean, is not from this region. Like, Togepi. Like Togepi, Togepi yeah, wasn't that's a exactly what I was Togepi from. came mm -hmm. so early, too. Seriously. Yeah. It was it was episode, because we just looked it up the other day. My my wife's a nanny, and the kids she's nannying are watching Pokemon. And Yo, she nice. was like, she was like, I want to find the episode, because Togepi's her favorite Pokemon. So she's like, I want to mm -hmm. find the episode where they get Togepi and, you know, show it to them. The first one where they get the egg is episode, like, 46, and then th it hatches in, like, episode, you know, no, it was, like, 43, and then it hatches in episode 47 or whatever, wow. as far as the Netflix numbering, which, like, that's still before the Orange Islands, which is still before Johto, so, like, that's uh, and even that pretty has, early. Like, a Meryl in it. Yeah, like, yeah, right, yeah, 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 exactly. And then, it's so funny, uh, man, because there's, like, I, Dawn I remember, Fan like, before Dawn Fan happened in the first mm -hmm. Pokemon movie. Like, they do that all the time. Yeah, yep. yeah. I remember being a kid, and and they, uh, you know, when they were like first revealing all the new Pokemon, I remember having a conversation with some kids like at school where they're like, "I can't believe they're adding more Pokemon." I'm like, "Yo, there was a Pokemon we didn't know who it was in the first episode." And have you listened to the Poker Rap? There's a line where he says, "There's at least 150 and more to see." Come on, we Bad. knew it. They teased it. Man, Bad. Pete's on top of it. But yeah, sure fetched that whole thing. Um, I love him. I put him on my team. He's going to be on my team. Confirmed. Yes. I don't know why he's just a fighting type, That's but it's, a, it's fine. Very good question. It's I so also weird. know that. Yeah. So weird that he doesn't keep either of his previous types. Like, I why not think, normal fighting? I Agreed. think that we're going to have a region exclusive or not like not. Uh, well, it's probably going to be game exclusive, but region exclusive variant of regular Farfetch. And he's also going to be just straight up fighting. And that's oh, going to be how they explain oh, it. And that's going to be like, you know, because like all the other far-fetched in like Kanto and whatever other regions you can find a far-fetched, uh, they're like endangered because they're food. But these far-fetched are not having it. They're like, <laughs> nah, I'll beat you up. Don't, don't come near me. It's a far-fetched squad. Yeah. <laughs> So there's like, like far fetched in this reason region are going to be like Zubat. They're going to be like all over the place. <laughs> That's Yo, so I have, I have a I have a wild theory I want to throw out to you go guys. We I'm talked ready. about it on uh, this week's episode of the podcast, which you guys should go check out on podcast services. Got a plug? Is that um, out yet? Right now? It'll be out by the time this is out on Saturday. It will already be out. Perfect. I'll send Good you a link. Know. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about it uh, during the main topic, and I went back and looked at the list of the original 151 Pokemon, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, I saw a lot of people being like, I can't believe Farfetch'd finally getting an evolution and everything. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see what other Pokemon are we're on that list. We're going to get to that in the Q&A section. Spoilers. <laughs> so do you want, you want to pause? All right, we'll put a pin in it. We'll put a pin. We'll put a pin on it. We'll come back. Yeah, we'll put, we'll put a pin. But in very good one. question, obviously, because it also came from somebody else that you're a little bit familiar with. But yeah, Surfetched. Um, he's. I, I have more thoughts about exactly what you were about to say, but we're gonna wait to talk about yeah, that same. part. Uh, same. <laughs> it's just funny too, because this is like there was that leak right before E3 that everything was right about it, and like it's still you know more things are coming out that was like well that that's true too. Um, and this being one. So it's just funny that when they tried to do that whole like glitched out thing, like what's this Pokemon? Who's that Pokemon or whatever? It's like, 
Well, well it's sir fetched. So yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. Based I mean, on that I, description, even yeah, without like, that, on. I feel like it was kind of obvious that it had something to do with far fetched because it looked like like the leak situation and all yeah. that. I guess that's why they put it on its side because like maybe if we hadn't known and just looked at it on its side, we would have thought it was actually angled that way. But I mean, it's definitely as soon as it was rotated, it's like. Yeah, that's that's Farfetch related. I think if the Surfetch rumor wasn't out there, it would have yes. been way easier for you to think it was just a new Pokemon. Like, oh, yeah. this must be a new Pokemon with a lance. Not I necessarily. Don't know I, like, I feel like I if, my mind wouldn't go to it being a new Pokemon because like, why would they tease it like that? That's true. <laughs> like teasing it, like scrambling what it looks like mm-hmm. feels like. It's hey, kind of weird they did this it this way anyway. To you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. They've never done <laughs> that really before. <laughs> Yeah, but in any case, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm excited about it. It's exclusive to Pokemon Sword, which makes sense because it's got a lance, but it also region, has a shield. The so best one. The only been... version of the game. Yep. But speaking of Sword <laughs> and Shields, um, Link's Awakening uh-huh. comes out uh, yesterday for you guys, tomorrow for us. So we haven't gotten to play it yet. Um, I may go to Walmart at some point, like midnight or something. Because again, Walmart puts out games for like $10 cheaper for no good reason. So... If I'm going to get a physical, I'm going to pick it up there. You know what the good reason is? What? That you, ju- you just literally, you just well, said the good it's reason. Well, it's $10. I mean, yeah, because you're going to go get it. That's the one. And they're like, you know what? We want Parker to buy a game from us more they often. They sure do. So. <laughs> we're going to drop but yeah, their price. You're so dollars. right. <laughs> but yeah, we've got uh, reviews for that here. Let me make sure. I'm going to check because it's still, you know, like within the window that could change yeah exactly so like i'm gonna check and see if the metacritic still i think it was at seven or 80 87 um at the time bad game bad game oh it's at 88 now look at that okay that's a good game never mind (laughs) it's a good game (laughs) it's interesting because i looked up that versus a lot of the other zelda games and obviously it's a remake so there's i mean that's a thing to take into consideration with it um but like that's actually on the low side for zelda games and we all know that it's it's literally just because it's a remake. Like, it's not yeah. that it's a bad game. It's obviously a great game as far as everybody's saying. There's a couple frame issues when switching, um, uh, when loading screens and stuff like that, essentially. But otherwise, you know, great game. But it's uh, uh, a remake of a game. So obviously it's going to have a little lower scores maybe than it would if it were completely fresh. But what are you guys' thoughts on just the things you've seen about it? I've been hearing a lot of people say that it's like a straight remake and then people are like bummed out by that. But like, I didn't play a whole lot of Link's Awakening. So I'm like, cool. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) that's fine for me. It's basically a new game to me anyway. Uh, Yeah, I I was talking about about it with some people on the Discord today and someone was like, oh, did they like add anything? And I'm like, no, why would they? It's perfect the way it is. Uh, so I, I am a huge Link's Awakening stan over here. Like, that is the first Zelda game I ever played. Mm-hmm. And the first like non Pokemon game I ever completed. Nice. And uh, so wild. it's got a real special place in my heart. And I was so stoked when they announced that it was coming back. The fact that it's like generally seems to be you know received well is like I'm over the moon about it. I so I actually have Steve from the podcast. Uh, he is sending me. The UK special edition with the steel book and everything. Yo, and I am so yep. into this game that I'm going to go buy a copy of it in America <laughs> and have two copies of it because I can't wait a week to play it. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody in my life is getting that game regifted to them this holiday season. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I would just get the digital version at that point. Well, no, because I was going to do that, but I'm like, no, if I buy a physical copy, I could give it away and I'll still have a physical copy when sure. mine shows up. Yeah, and true. and then I don't have to buy somebody a gift, and they'll be like, "Oh, this is great! How thoughtful of you! I wanted to play this so bad." And I'm like, and then exactly. they'll listen to this episode of this podcast <laughs> and be like, "Ah, ooh, he hates me actually." So <laughs> what a <laughs> what a monster! <laughs> Blessing me with this game like that. Oh, goodness, <laughs> I literally did the exact same thing with. Uh, funny enough, Spider Man PS4. I ordered the PS4 nice. Pro, and mm-hmm. it came no. like a day late, and I was like, "No." Went and bought the game, took it on a trip that I was going on for a weekend, and then the next month gave it to my my best friend for his birthday. It's like this game is exceptional. You should play it. There you go. Happy birthday, brother! <laughs> Amazon <laughs> used to do something dope when I lived in Florida. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was like a it was like hurricane season or something. I like pre ordered Gears of War or something something on the Xbox, 
Mm -hmm. um and they were like oh we gotta delay it because like the weather and all that crap but like here's a digital code so i just got the game twice that's awesome i was like yo that's dope they need to do that with everything (laughs) yeah because uh amazon's still really great about everything and jeff bezos still gives everybody all the money that they're owed and doesn't give for himself at all nah man as we've been before amazon's uh trash because they're always (laughs) late uh, so give us all Jeff Bezos money <laughs> on twitch.tv slash fanatics for yeah links awakening coming out I'll like I said I'll probably I'm gonna pick it up either late late tonight or um I'll probably be asleep late late tonight so probably tomorrow at some point well definitely tomorrow at some point right after work and I'm excited to play it and other things that we're excited about well this is the part of the show where we talk about some of the comments that you left on the videos that we made this week uh you leave some comments on those and then we'll pull them up here and comment on them so it's you know kind of some back and forth there and first we go into aj's so here we go so aj had a video on switch on or the sorry not switch online nintendo's online back in the olden days so you know yeah. up through the end of gamecube more or less and we've got some comments on all of that so the first yeah. one comes from gpimpyo1. That's right. I had previously <laughs> heard about the service for the SNES and 64DD, but I didn't realize and uh, Nintendo GameCube okay, and GC had online. As stated before, these types of video are awesome, but I'm sure the algorithm doesn't like them. They do not. <laughs> it does not like these videos at all because it's not topical it's just like a random thing that's like hey like this is neat mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like uh and i know a lot of people like the only reason why i made it not because i thought that it was going to do well but because when i made the last one people are like i like this and i was like okay compromise i'm not making it 20 minutes because it's not going to do good enough to justify <laughs> that uh but i will talk about the stuff that people probably don't know about because like i was going to do wii and the wii u and then 3ds but like everybody knows about that already and regular ds everybody knows about that or I'd assume most people know about it already, and it's the longest part of the history because it's right. so much more involved. Yeah. Uh, so I don't even want to do that. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll do. I, I was thinking that I'll probably do like another video of like stuff that the older online, like the newer older online services did that Switch still doesn't do that it can also do, but better. <laughs> <laughs> that's the title that's gonna be the title of the video uh, the algorithm's gonna love that one <laughs> no kidding <laughs> you trying to teach someone something get out of here <laughs> yeah man no i think that i think it's something like that would be easier to market mm-hmm. it's just harder to market old stuff if i if i can't put the old stuff in the title if i would have put like yes and yes and and yes and famicom and etsy like if i would have put that in the title yeah. it would have been easier uh, but it didn't flow as well. Yeah. So it's odd to me because there's some channels like Scott the Waz or whatever where it feels like that's pretty much the majority of what he does is, you know, just like it's kind of all random out of the blue ed- ed- entertainment, but also educational sorts yeah. of stuff and does great. And like, I mean, obviously partly just because it's, it's it's great content. So like it's fun yeah, to watch and he's a funny I guy think, and all that. I, th- but. I think the problem with that is that there's a groundswell. And that's mm-hmm. really all you need. Yeah, <laughs> like right. once it, if you have a groundswell of people, if you have 30,000 people that are show up to your video in the mm-hmm. first 10 minutes, then YouTube's going to look yeah. at that and yeah. say, oh, okay, your video is about NES. We're going to recommend it to literally yeah. everybody that ever searched for I NES mean, in their digital lives. foundry is the most nitty gritty thing that there is pretty much. And like, yeah. that does great. And like on the music side, Adam Neely's channel is like, man, I don't even understand. Like I know music theory stuff pretty well and I don't understand a lot of what you're saying, but it's interesting. <laughs> so, yeah. Kind of stuff. I think that's definitely the thing is like it's like similar to like the gaming historian like does a very similar kind yeah. of thing and it's just like if you do have that baked in audience that goes and sees it right away it gets served better so so I, I think the real solution right is if if you listeners want to see more of those history videos you got to like this video well not this one because it's on a different <laughs> channel but go yeah. like that video comment on it subscribe to the channel share it show the it notification to all bell. of your friends yeah show like it to you, your mom and say hey did you know back in your time the ancient times there were online video games you could times. download video games at blockbuster <laughs> <laughs> well not really it was like a vending machine but you know you get it <laughs> yeah you know blockbuster deceptive yeah. john says i remember being a kid hearing about the ds getting online so 12 year old me was waiting on bated breath for animal crossing and the chance to play with friends online and i waited and i waited 
and I waited and delay after delay until the day came when it finally launched. Unfortunately, friends had all moved on from the DS and we were all into their and we're all into their Xboxes and Halos while I sat alone playing solo tag in Animal Crossing Wild World. <laughs> Thanks, Nintendo. I still wake up in a cold sweat thinking about your DS internet service. At least Heart Gold Sold Silver was great. <laughs> Rip, dude, Rip. That's a sad story, man. Um, I don't think I ever played the uh, DS Animal Crossing. That's probably the only Animal Crossing that I didn't play. Like at all. I messed around with that one a little bit. It's pretty good. It's definitely not as bad as... Uh, it's not bad at all. City Folk's the only one I don't like. Oh, I thought you were about to say uh, Dude Leaf. I was about to say... You're no, come on. Fight. New You're Leaf is the cream fight. of the crop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man. Uh, it's rough. It's rough out here in these Animal Crossing streets. You know what I mean? I think mean? the nice thing is that when the new one comes out on Switch, you'll have plenty of people to play with. So. That's true. true. And true. I'm, Unless that gets delayed and delayed again <laughs> time after time, and you're going to sit all alone on your Switch and play it by yourself. <laughs> tag. AJ, eternally the pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, man, it'll definitely come out before Metroid Prime Four. That's so true. <laughs> man, no alive. matter what. <laughs> yep. Casper three two three seven says, "Wow, I've learned so much about Nintendo's previous online capabilities. I can go for high score prizes again. They t- they can send game vouchers, eShop cards, or even digital games over the internet. Such innovation in online services. What happened to you, Nintendo?" Uh, I think I honestly think the Virtual Boy comparison you made in your video, AJ, is exactly it. That they like were they were too early to adopt it, and th- right. then they got gun shy, and then mm-hmm. now they've been playing catch up for like three generations. Yeah, because it's like they get in this whole thing where it's like we're going to try this new thing, and it's it seems neat. Well, let's see how it works, and then it works out the way that it does, and then they're like, well, obviously people don't want this. This whole so internet not- thing's a fad. Yeah, it's like they're not gonna <laughs> like people aren't paying for the internet, dude. Like the internet is expensive. We only got a hundred something thousand subscribers for this expensive endeavor that we mm-hmm. tried to do. <laughs> so like we're never doing this again. Yep. And then everybody else started doing it when it was cheap. <laughs> so I mean, it's like, kind of like them in the movie business too, where like you know they were they were pretty early on to get the Mario movie out there, and that was uh, that was a movie, all right. And so yeah, and since left. then. They have not done it again. Which, like, I think even that isn't a solid compare. Because, like, with the movie, they're like, yeah, just do what you want, man. Here's the Mario license. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I think the Mario movie kind of did what people want to be done with online. Because they looked at what happened and they're like, oh, no, that's not happening again. We're being involved and we're making sure that mm-hmm. whatever comes out of our brand is going to be great. Yeah, but not till like 2022. So like, yeah, man, takes time. Takes yeah. time to realize that you're not just a video game company. You're Disney. Like you're mm-hmm. literally without the Disney. Super, without the Super Mario Brothers movie, we never would have gotten the MCU. That's what I just heard. That's what I learned here today. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got it. So amazing. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, interesting things on the online. Thing. It's hard to have comments too on the on a more informative video yeah, like that. That's so it's the other thing. Not as much to riff on. So yeah, because you can't you can't. And the only comments that are possible. There's two comments. Great video. Or you got this part wrong. And, <laughs> and, and, like that's the that's the only possible comment. Uh-huh. Or the couple that are more like this, where it's like this is what I already knew, so it was interesting to learn about this as well. Like yes, yes. and we appreciate that a lot. So. Thank you, everybody, for sending those comments in. Uh, and speaking of that, we got the other video, which is the one that I worked on. Um, so this one, again, if if you didn't watch it, the premise was based on a comment or a question from last week's podcast and then turning that into a video topic. So I may do more of those or maybe even AJ will do some of those. I don't know. Um, I think we should like try doing that for a while and see how it works yeah like see if see if that like balances everything like if that like completes the circle you know right. where it's like more people <laughs> are interested in directly to you because of that and mm-hmm. then you know snake eats his tail and all that great stuff yeah. how meta can we make our content <laughs> <laughs> eventually I mean, it'll the, be yeah it's the whole point of the podcast like mm-hmm. the eventually you guys just to... start making episodes where you like watch your own videos and comment on them yeah we'll be pewdiepie <laughs> 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 I've literally never seen a PewDiePie video in my life. Like I have, I know all about him, but have zero reference points besides <laughs> his chair being able to lower a lot. To do I, I l- that, literally have seen one, and it was I want to say 
probably seven to ten years ago now, and it was oh, when man. my aforementioned different. my aforementioned cousin, her ch- son, is like a gamer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember he was like, oh, you like YouTube? Do you like PewDiePie? And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> and he guys had me watch one. And I was like, all right, cool. Great. I'm going to go back nah, and watch more kind of like, funny. <laughs> I, I think new PewDiePie is a better PewDiePie than old PewDiePie. <laughs> Good to know. I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, mm. But yeah, at, at some point, that's what I want. I want people to like, you know, comment and stuff. Because the point is to be a community and to talk to each other and whatnot, you know? Indeed. So yeah, you guys do that and you ask some questions and you say some things. So here's some comments on that video. So Grim Hain said, you know what would be great? Oh yeah, and for context, if anybody didn't watch that video, uh, the topic was what genres of games haven't shown up or just aren't very prevalent on the Switch. So, and what can we do about them or what does Nintendo do about them? That kind of thing. So Grim Hain said, you know what would be great? If sports games didn't need to be licensed by NFL, NHL, NBA, et cetera, games we'd see actual competition in that genre. Whereas now they do seem to be almost shelling the same game in whatever the year is with an updated roster. Look at the 2K20 NBA game on the PC port, which of which literally had this and the 2K19 taskbar icon. Yeah, this isn't a game breaking issue, though. Apparently the PC port had a number of major bugs, but it does show the lack of care being put into these games. It's like how big name stars will put silly requests such as only wanting green M&Ms. It's not a it's not to be a pain in the butt. It's just to let the star know if the venue is paying attention to detail or not. If the seemingly silly detail is ignored, it tells a lot about the people responsible. Yeah, that's an interesting analogy. Uh, I, I definitely think that, that the competition issue is a really strong point because if mm-hmm. you look uh, back historically at, you know, the gen- like when we were kids, right, uh, the PlayStation N64 generation, even into the PlayStation 2 GameCube stuff, um, there used to be two to three sports franchises mm-hmm. per major American sport. So yeah, like 2K had like their own version of all of them that EA did. Well, right. Well, because like you, you think like there was uh, what was the it was NBA Live was EA's mm-hmm. and you had 2K right. and you had Madden right. and you had the NFC games, you know, and there was like NFL yeah, you Blitz had, uh, and you had 2K mm-hmm. football, too. They had a um, right. Right. Yeah. So like series. you not only had at least two sports sims, you had all the weird like spinoff arcade games NFL like NFL Street and NBA Street. Sh- and, yo, yeah. and NBA Street was the jam. Yo, <laughs> NBA Street, like specifically like volume two. Everybody had that. Yes. <laughs> that the jam, dude. Everybody. What a great game. Uh, and again, like the Blitz stuff, like you, mm-hmm. you had you had more competition. So there was more than one game in town. So every game was forced to innovate in different ways. And like, I don't agree with the uh, overall assessment that like these games don't like that. They don't care. You know, I think that like I think that yeah, that think argument is a little people care like. There's there's not going to be like a team full of like developer developers that are just like yeah this thing that I whatever, spent yeah. three years yeah. on I don't care. <laughs> I think I, I think the thing is though that if you're the if you're not the kind of person that plays those games every year and cares about them like it's easy to look at minute really minute innovation as nothing and yeah. you know I think it's just like that game isn't for you and mm. that's fine because there's obviously an audience that they speak to. But I think, like, as somebody who really likes arcade sports games, like, I think it sucks that there's not that competition anymore. Because, like, yeah. I think the best example for me is wrestling games. Like, I'm not a wrestling guy, but I used mm-hmm. to love WWE games coming up because they were zany and goofy and fun. And now they're, like, these super complex sports sims. and It's just boring. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the Tony Hawk to skate for or, like, to yeah. skate kind of transition. Like, I've only played Tony Hawk. Uh, to- Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk of those like I haven't played any skate games but to my understanding you know those are like I I mean and I very briefly used to skate in like seventh grade and I was really bad at it but in any case if- I too have a nose ring I know <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but you know like if I'm trying to actually like do a heel flip with you know the joysticks and stuff like that as opposed to being able to press some buttons to do it 
there's definitely going to be a, a higher learning curve that is maybe unappealing to a certain number slash a lot of people because it's like no those people are dumb dude that that mechanic <laughs> is cool man it's cool i it's, mean it's it, it's cool to be able to reenact that like for somebody who does care about skating in general like that's awesome but for anybody else like that doesn't really care about that i don't know like it's hashtag get good <laughs> know i haven't like i said i haven't played them so maybe it's you know better done than i'd even know but that that kind of thing where things get too simulation-y is yeah. um can be definitely just less fun i think if i if i had to time. like actively balance on the board all the time yeah. and skate that wouldn't be i wouldn't be down with that <laughs> yeah for yeah. me it's just like i i get it like if you really love any of those sports or or whatever sports entertainment with wrestling mm -hmm. like I get wanting to have something that's very mechanical. Like, right. Mm -hmm. And like authentic fine. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Unquote. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in it deep, like that's, that's great. But to me, I, I've never understood the appeal of that sort of thing, I guess, because I don't really care about sports Yeah. because like I want to play a video game. And like, to <laughs> me, it, it's the same reason that I really hate. Uh, have you guys ever played um, any games by, either Supermassive or Quantic Dream, like Until Dawn or Detroit yeah. or any. So yeah. I, I like story-driven games like that, but one of the things that I ding them for the most is there's nothing worse to me in a video game than when real realism mm -hmm. gets in the way of something feeling fun or fluid. So like mm. in those games that manifests in like when you have to pick up an item and it's like press R2 to pick up the item and then rotate it in your hand. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's how holding things works. Like, no, you want it to be you don't as press intuitive R2 mentally as when is. you pick things up. <laughs> no, no. I'm like, oh, how do I oh, use on, this press X real quick? <laughs> Hold on, I press circle. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, side note. That was a visual gag. You guys can't see it because we're not on camera anymore. Rip, dude. Uh, yep, true. And, and I, I think yeah. that that is the kind of thing for me where as soon as, like, realism gets in the way mm -hmm. of something being enjoyable, that's yep. not a good thing. Like, Tony Hawk isn't anything like real skateboarding. It's a right. skateboarding yeah. game. Yeah. That's why it's fun. I mean, literally nobody like Tony Hawk himself or anybody else, no matter how big the half pipe is, you're not going to be doing 12 tricks off one side <laughs> of the half pipe, one after another. Like, that's just not how that works. So, yeah, or you when know, you like fun. jump up and you go 10 feet in the air. Or <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. That's it's I mean, games are meant to be fun. That's the whole thing with like I never I didn't play Red Dead 2. But from what I heard with that, too, same kind of thing where there's some bits of it where it's like, I don't want to have to walk this far to get I my or so very much stop playing that game for that exact reason. And you I, know I loved Red Dead Redemption 2. And that's a we're totally valid criticism <laughs> while we're talking about it. Since this is related, mm -hmm. Kojima saying that oh, the first half <laughs> of Death Stranding is not going to be fun. It's not going to get really I, fun until the second half. Out. I was like, oh, hard guys. out, dude. Hard I out. was already Ooh. so not interested in that game. And as soon as he said that, mm -mm, done. Yeah. Same. Out. I was like moderately inter interested because like I don't really care like you know everybody loves Kojima or not everybody people love Kojima <laughs> Kojima's yeah. like Miyamoto like he's even more like to some he's people a he's like a significantly bigger deal than Miyamoto like no, he can do no wrong right <laughs> Ooh, so, I don't know about I, that one <laughs> I put I'm talking about like that's how people view him or some people view him Jeff Keighley. some people um, cough, cough. <laughs> yes yes they're best friends forever don't you dare I'm talk ill of that <laughs> <laughs> and I have never like I've I played one Metal Gear Solid game nearly to completion, and that's the newest one. The rest of them, I'm not survived the the newest actual one, <laughs> uh, Metal Gear Solid Five Phantom Pain. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of them, I'm like, nope, this isn't fun. <laughs> so, I, but playing the fifth one and mm -hmm. hearing good things about PT and stuff like that, I'm like, hey, Kojima, he does some cool stuff. Maybe I'll check this game out. You know, Bob. Uh, mm -hmm. Bob, as you all know, uh, he <laughs> likes that game and he likes Kojima and his weirdness. So I was like, I'll check it out. But once I saw that, I was like, nope. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> I've been I've been out for like over a year. They've shown <laughs> way too much of that game to for me to still not know anything about it. You know, yeah, like, yeah. And when, I, you know, what was even worse before he even said, oh, it won't be fun until you're 50 hours into the game. First of all, <laughs> hard pass. I don't have 50 <laughs> hours to not have fun with. Yeah. Uh, 
But on top of that, when they're like, oh, there's a 45 minute trailer of this game at TGS. Yeah, it's like no, hard pass, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here with that, man. Yeah, I don't even have a PS4. So, I mean, it's not going to happen regardless. But I'm very interested to see how that all pans out, because I mean, it could go one of a couple different ways, but I like may, uh, some people, no matter what, are going to call it a masterpiece. And oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very I have, curious. I have uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, from Seth, from the Gamer Delphia podcast is like a huge Kojima Metal Gear stan. And he like I have literally gotten a scr- not screaming match. I was screaming <laughs> at him and he's just like, I don't know, man, uh, about how I'm just like, this is bad. It's bad. Mark. And he's like, no, it's all. It already started. It's all an experience. You gotta, you gotta is, just get is, into it. I'm like, no, he is drinking. Get, the I hate it. I hate it dude. already. He so is drinking funny. the Kool-Aid. Yeah, heavily. dude. He's he is already like in his tracksuit, drank the Kool-Aid. He's done. I feel like that's how a lot of people felt about. So I had a friend that was like super, super into the Cloverfield um, marketing before it, where Mm -hmm. it was like just really abstract. You didn't know what was going on. Then when you watched the movie, it was like all that stuff kind of makes sense, but like still didn't know what to expect until that point. And some people loved it and like he loved it. Other people were so mad, (laughs) like just (laughs) not having the whole thing. Um, and I feel like that's just going to happen with this where like, we just really don't, I mean, if it, if it, if the gameplay that we've seen is super representative of the game, that, that doesn't seem like an interesting or fun game at all. If it's not, then we still don't have any idea what it is. So either way, there's a lot of room for error. Yep. So that concludes our PlayStation podcast. Oh man. It'll Uh, be very interesting. (laughs) Back to the comments. Dude. I didn't do this on purpose. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's good. That one was AJ. Don't worry that. about it. I did it again. Uh, but hey, uh, maybe it'll come to Switch someday, and I won't play it there either. You know? Next. Oh, man. Next up, John Francis says, I don't really pay attention to the quote-unquote big games. Hell, my first major AAA was... Uh, where the triple <laughs> a was breath of the wild so as long as a game is enjoyable i buy i just wish really? more games had demos i am very interested in what the games are that you play <laughs> let me know in the comments of this or there if you want because mm-hmm. like i don't need like what games do you play <laughs> that's so interesting because like i feel like in this day and age i totally i guess the more interesting question is how old are you because yeah, if that's you're also true. like 16 i totally buy that because for the last like decade there's been a thriving indie scene where like yes yeah, most or not maybe not most but i would say a significant percentage of the quote-unquote best mm-hmm. games of the year are right. small indie experiences so like but i think even then it's like you know like the younger kids uh you know kids these days shaking. i mean like if, if you cut your teeth like on Minecraft, like Minecraft or something like that, yeah, exactly. Right, exactly though. Yeah, yeah. Like if but you grew up on Minecraft, those, those are big deals. Those are AAA games at this point. No, but they're not though. Yeah, they are. Like no, Minecraft, how much money mean. did they dump into Minecraft at this point? Minecraft and Fortnite are one thousand percent AAA games. No, no, Fortnite. Fortnite is a AAA game. I don't think Minecraft is. Minecraft I think is. Uh, Minecraft is absolutely a AAA. So here's game. what so I'd say with all that is I feel like the to me a AAA game is like MMOs or games that are like continuously going on sort of live in a separate world now because more and more money gets put into them where they start as one thing and then kind of develop as opposed to, to me, I think a AAA game I'd more define as something that has a lot of money but is a singular release or like maybe has lots of DLC as well but is more focused on one, like here's the thing. Whereas Fortnite, like a lot of money was put into it and is still being put into it but it's still kind of, it's a growing thing. Like it's more on the MMO side, which is maybe, I mean, although it's not, I but as far my, as like, the, Minecraft small. is exactly like that too. Yeah. No, yeah. Like, um, to, to, to me, it's all about, it's all about like, we, we talked about budget, but I think it's mm-hmm. also like the size of the team. And I think you're making a strong point that like Minecraft has maybe evolved to that level. Yes. Right. But I still, I still wouldn't call it a triple a game because it originated as a, it is an a alpha very... game made by one person. It became it is... a worldwide phenomenon yeah. as an indie game. And I, I, I don't think, think that like, I think you can call thing... it triple a because it became popular. Right. I think, th- I, I don't necessarily think that that really has anything to do with it just because like, 
it it would be no different from like how Mario started with a small team and then got sequels that uh, then grew no because the team. you can't you can't count that because isn't... that that's nineteen eighty five man like a game and, but a even, game back but, then like every game was made by like two people <laughs> yeah exactly you know, like, because it started at a small point <laughs> the the indie scene essentially is the gaming world ten years ago mm-hmm. so it's like this is the budgets that like. Our, our, our game, like, technology is far enough where you can have a smaller budget to develop a game that would have cost a couple, like, $10 million, $10, $20 million. All right, so then let me ask you, what, what is the line for you? What what to you des- designates between AAA and non-AAA? Because to I me, think, it's it's size of the team. I think AAA, is, it depends on the budget. It's, it's entirely the budget for me. Like, if, if uh, Minecraft is at the point where they have dumped tens of millions of dollars into this property and the game like just the amount of updates and stuff like that that they like vanilla like alpha version minecraft is nothing like minecraft mm-hmm. now right nothing. yeah i mean the game's been running for what i mean like almost eight years yeah yeah longer almost Isn't 10 it, did yeah. the alpha come out in 2009 i think it was 10 years but yeah like a decade so at yeah. this point, like effectively minecraft has had like two three sequels <laughs> worth of content <laughs> sure so sure like, sure i i think that is absolutely a triple a game so like on the i and i am curious like you said for like for john francis what that does mean because i feel like before the indie scene was big pretty much it was triple a games middleware games and shovelware games and that was like yeah, that's pretty much right. it. And so I'm curious, like before that, were you just not playing much at all or were you playing mostly indie games or was it in the middleware shovelware kind of world? You know, like maybe we sports games or something like that, which, again, are triple A games on a maybe one sense. But, you know, as far as like more genre wise, triple A, not so much, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and like and again, like how old are you? Yeah. And also maybe you started playing video games later. Because, yep, you know, true. not everybody yep. starts when they're a kid. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good stuff. It, what, what's interesting about that comment, I thought we were going to talk more about the fact that, because uh, he also mentions, I just wish more games had demos, and I agree with that. Um, I don't so, know. I, I kind of like, so, I mean, well, not selfishly. Uh, selfishly is a weird way to put it. Um, but a lot of times, if there's a game that I want to play, mm-hmm. um, chances are I'm going to, I can get it through the developer um right so i mean that's essentially the demo for me you know <laughs> yeah so you're not a good uh, a good um yeah, for like that. the only time that i'm going to play a demo is like the scenario with dragon quest where it's like this is a meaty enough thing for me mm-hmm. to consume this and make content from it i think without I, having to buy the game yeah i like demos the developer. for like because sometimes i'll be playing through a demo and i kind of mentioned i replied to the comment and mentioned some of this but didn't go into quite a ton of detail um sometimes i'll download the demo play it and be like yeah that was fun and not care if i play any more of that which is like that's yeah. the perfect amount to show me that i don't really actually need to buy this game but then there's other ones that i'll buy them like octopath traveler i played the three hours of that and i was like but i want to play more <laughs> and so then i bought it and i played it <laughs> and i did see so. that's what happened um the only time the last demo that i that i downloaded and just played for non-content reasons was Poyo Poyo Tetris because I just wanted to play Tetris. Yeah, and I didn't have any other way to do that <laughs> yet because Tetris ninety nine wasn't out. That's right. Um, and I put like I don't know like fifteen hours into playing that demo, and I was like, at this point, I need to just buy this game. So I bought the game <laughs> and never touched it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, for for me, I like. I guess it would be nice. I think I probably would have saved a few bucks if every game came with a demo, but like, it's not a thing I'm bothered with. Cause I don't really play demos, you know, like mm. there, I have so many demos that I've installed and be like, Oh, can't wait to try this. Like mm-hmm. I downloaded the Octopath demo and then was like, eh, I'm going to buy it. Like I want to <laughs> try it. Like I, I think yeah. to me, like I, I have this consumer mentality of like, if I want to roll the dice on a game, I'll pay for it. And if I don't like it, I don't like it. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Same. I still haven't played the Damon X, the second yeah, Damon I, X mocking the demo. I was, a, I was like going to around when the reviews came out and I was like, I'm just, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Dude, honestly, for me, like with that game, I played the first demo and I was like, oh, this game is the one I thought yeah. it was. And yeah. people were like, oh, it got better in the next one. I'm like, I don't care. Like yeah. so the reviews are the reviews are way too soft for that to be a game worth playing. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, especially for it to be like, 
it, the the original game, it was interesting seeing what I did and didn't like about it. Like, I think I would have only played the second demo mostly to find out what I mean, just to see the differences and for it to be something to talk about. But by that point, I was pretty sure that, like, I'm I'm definitely not going to get it around launch unless it blows me away. And for that, the reviews would also have to be great and stuff. So it's, you know, and I've got other stuff I'm playing right now. So, yeah, because for me, good. like, I don't I, I certainly don't base all or even most of my purchasing decisions mm -hmm. on reviews but like when mm -hmm. it comes to a game that you're like on the fence about it's kind of like man in 2019 there's not enough time I, to take it back to the death stranding thing there's yeah. not enough time for a game that's okay yeah and right. let alone games there's not enough time for art that's okay <laughs> if something's not blowing me away like why even bother there's so many options now yeah. how many games do i know i would love that i'll never ever touch yep a lot very yes. true how many games are on my Switch that I'll never... There are literally games that I have never opened that yep. are installed on my There's, Switch. I've got, that I paid money for in some <laughs> cases. <laughs> yeah, I think I've got two on my Switch. No, I've got one on my Switch that that's the case. And I bought it because it was Dragon's Dogma. It was on sale nice. when Capcom was having their big sale. Uh, mm -hmm. It was like, I don't know, 25% off or something. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it and I'll play it a lot later. But then besides that, I try to make as diligent an effort as possible to play and finish all the games that I want to like some of the games like Diablo. Like I said, I got some of the way through and was like, I just don't care. Like played about 15 hours of it. And I was like, I'm good. That was enough for me. But other ones moving along, Justin Latham, which uh, is he's with us here on our team at Fanatics yep. Four. he says the FPS issue could be fixed if they just hurried up with Metroid prime four. That's true, which is interesting. Uh um, which I mean, so I mean, my initial thoughts on that is yes and no, only because the yes, obviously, because it is technically a first person shooter in the sense that you're shooting things in its first person, but it's more of typically an action adventure game. And then so it's a question of like on the FPS side, what do they do with multiplayer? Do they a do they do something at all? And then B, is it, um, you know, does it kind of bring in that Halo or Call of Duty I or whatever crowd? I would be shocked especially with the delay if they didn't have some sort of like online experience like if luigi's mansion <laughs> is getting this like apparently substantial multiplayer yeah like if this game that got delayed into infinitum you know like we don't even know when this game's coming out uh it doesn't have like as many selling points as humanly possible yep i i don't know then they're like, doing something and, wrong like <laughs> yeah, maybe I think, uh, maybe oh, it'll sorry. turn into like a Breath of the Wild situation where it's also on the Nintendo Swap trademark uh, all rights reserved. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, but like like say from that, I don't know what they like to 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 promote this to like the people that haven't played Metroid before. It would be so weird to not have a multiplayer component for a first person shooter. Yeah. Or a game that at least looks like a first-person shooter to those. Sure. Games. Yeah, it definitely gives you that option at least to like try and snag that crowd. Um, but uh, I hate I hate to say this because I have to like bring up a mistake you, you made in the video. Where you you called out Overwatch as <laughs> one of the yeah. third-person shooters yeah. coming, yeah. and I was like, comments, no, that's uh, that's man. the first-person shooter. That's the only <laughs> one that they have. A hundred percent. Like, yeah. So somebody commented that in the video, and I was. I was like, huh, it's it's not a third person shooter and like thought that they meant because because it's a hero shooter or whatever. And then I looked at the footage oh. and I was like, nope, that's straight up a first person shooter. And I went back. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, man, you're 100 percent right. I went with I went with my memory on that and I was so far off. <laughs> yeah, you probably oh, just remembered like a kill cam or something. I, don't, in yeah, a, in I think I remembered mostly the um, trailer footage because that's what I've, oh, I've okay, never yeah. played Overwatch because I just don't yeah, care about I'm shooters saying. at all. So I, how dare I you, watched how dare the, you, how dare you. We're play, you're playing it with the cute boys. So most or... of the footage that I. <laughs> I, that I use in the trailer, I mean, in my videos is like trailer footage because it's just, especially if it's games I don't play, like that's easy footage that I don't have to like, you know, give credit to anybody or, or whatever, anything. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So it just makes everything easier. So a lot of that stuff is showing, you know, not third, not first person stuff. So yeah, hundred percent made a mistake there. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I, I don't, I don't mean that to be like pedantic or pedantic or anything, but I think that is like the answer to the whole first person, like online yeah. competitive multiplayer thing is that overwatch is, you know, of the last 
five years, arguably one of the hottest first person shooters, you know? Yeah. So that's a huge get for Nintendo. I think in this scenario of like at least offering something for that crowd. Yeah. Yeah. And Overwatch I is a great game. Right. Yeah. But it's 30 what frames per second and it's only 900 P. So unplayable bad game. True. Yeah. It's handheld though. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> get over it. babies. <laughs> Oh man, Spectrum Bots 42 last comment for my video and then we go on to the Q&A. Spectrum Bots 42 says, "I'd like to see more games that use that make use of the touch screen. Can you imagine if Enhance Games and Mobcast Games made a new Meteos game for the Switch with multi-touch controls and eight players?" I don't know what those things are. <laughs> I, I I know what each of those words mean separately, but woof. I, I, you know what? I can't even imagine. That's how awesome it would be, I, Spectrum I Boss Point Two. I truly can't imagine what that would be like. <laughs> let us know if you listen to the podcast. Uh, let us know in uh, the comments Describe here what those in are. Detail. You know what? Make an action point about what that game would be like. <laughs> I, because I really like. I'm trying to imagine the eight players thing. Really throws me off too. Like a touch screen game with eight players. Like, is it a Civilization are we all touching kind of the thing? same game? Are you touching the same screen? Yeah, right, exactly. Is it that? Are we on different screens? Is it like an RTS kind of thing? Because like I can imagine RTS is working really well with touchscreen, but I don't know. I'm very curious on that. So <laughs> in any case, yes, I, I agree on your behalf, Spectrum Bots 42. There you go. <laughs> True. And then the last section that we got is the Q&A segment. So uh, the first bit of this that we do is the comments that you leave on the podcast here on the YouTube video. So again, if you're listening to this on the audio form on, you know, podcast services or whatever, that's great. That's awesome. Go ahead and leave reviews and likes and all that stuff on those respective place things so that we can get moved up in placement and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. um, also, if you want to leave some comments on the podcast itself, we'll kind of reference them, some of them the next week. So We've got some of those real quick first before we get into the actual Q&As. And at the end of the episode last week, uh, we pulled a question out of nowhere randomly, which was, uh, what Pokemon would you bring home to your grandma's house? Something like that. I could be wrong. See, this this is like uh, one of those things. Because like, I talk about this a lot where it's like I, I talk for hours <laughs> that are recorded. Yeah. Right? Every week. True. Um, and like... All the time, somebody says something in the comments or tweets me something, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, where did that come from? <laughs> and yes. this was that, where yeah. I saw all the comments about, like, I'd have this Pokemon. I'm like, wait, what? What's the Where did this come from? Yeah. When did we say anything about that? But that explains it. That was it. <laughs> Is right now when you just remembered it because I said it? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. Yeah, that was this was the question that I, I think I asked it right at the yeah, end I of the thing. Yeah, I think you did it, yeah. So there you go. But you guys did a great I job said answering. something else that was even more random than that. <laughs> so uh, we're going to just go through some of these. Uh, Falcon, F-Zero Kid, says, I'd bring Pikachu and Eevee to my grandma's house as those are the two she really likes. Makes sense. No, that's dope. They're good ones. Yeah, your grandma my likes grandma Pokemon. That's awesome. Yeah. Neither one of my grandmas know what Eevee is. They, I mean, they they know what Pikachu is. Yeah, I don't think I I need to. So I'll be going back home to see my parents in a couple weeks, and I I want to like do one of those things of like you know have them name that Pokemon or whatever. And I'm pretty sure my mom for Gen One would probably get over fifty percent for sure, probably close to seventy five percent. And my dad would get like two and it would be hilarious I, and great. I think <laughs> honestly, I kind of want to go do that with my dad because I think he'd nail it. He watched Pokemon with me every Saturday for like nice. three years. <laughs> my mom played through Pokemon Yellow with me. Uh -huh. And there, there was like the whole story about me trading away our, uh, I don't remember, Pikachu. Yeah. We traded out away Pikachu for a Charizard because oh, I couldn't no. figure out how to get Charmander out of the box. Uh, <laughs> and she made me trade it back. But even that, like, she knew more about it because obviously I'm like a yeah, right. freaking stupid five year old kid or something. Um, and she knew more about the game and the stats and all that stuff than I did. Uh, but at this point, if I was like, "Hey, what's this Pokemon?" If it's not Pikachu, she doesn't know. <laughs> she doesn't know. I think I think my dad would definitely at least get all of the starters. Like any Pokemon mm. that Ash had in season one, I feel like he'd probably get right. Nice. I'm curious. It, I'll 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 do it, and we'll see what happens. We'll do a little Jeopardy. And I'll bring it back it, and let you guys know. It, it, it routinely shocks me. Even my niece, who is eight. So, like, yep. she's in the demographic of people that should know what Pokemon are. Mm -hmm. It shocks me when she's like, that's Pikachu. I'm like, how do you know that? Because, like, you don't play video games. <laughs> Yo, Pikachu is, like, sensation. 
Yeah, exactly. Like Pikachu's got that. Uh, I forget. There's a there's a name for it. There's like this weird scale um, that they do with cartoon characters where it like gauges how recognizable they are like worldwide. And Pikachu is up there with like Mickey Mouse in terms of like yeah, pretty much every person alive knows who Pikachu is. Yeah, that's like what I said when I said Nintendo's literally Disney. That's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. They have all these IP that just worldwide people know like oh that's a mario <laughs> pikachu's a macy's day balloon people know yeah. the guy <laughs> yeah that's true i'm i started to try to look up what you were talking about pete and i don't know how to put the words together to Maybe look that Grim up but i'm Hain super knows. curious I, I feel like that would be random information that's true that Grim Grim Hain, know, so do it let us know in the comments uh speaking it's, of comments yeah, it's an interesting thing some more talking about uh the gram the grandma and pokemon and stuff uh this one <laughs> is a little sad so here we go uh seven <laughs> Bianca says, uh, I would take Pumpkaboo and Rotom to my grandma's house because she's dead, so would get along great with two ghost types. Jesus. <laughs> God. <laughs> dark. So that's, that's pretty dark. Uh, you picked two very cute ghost Pokemon, that's though. That's so. very true. So, good Pumpkaboo stuff there. is adorable. True. Yep. Uh, Chris, could, I mean, you could have picked, like, Trevenant or something like that. Trevenant's ugly. <laughs> no, that's a nightmare factory. <laughs> Uh, Crazy Derp says, I would bring Chandler to light up the non-paid electricity house, but also for heating up the house, and a mudkip for watering plants. And he's cute. Why not like an electric type? I don't know. Just, you know, just keep it cozy, I guess. Why uh, doesn't your grandma have heat? <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say? She's old. She's old. Somebody give this lady some electricity. <laughs> <laughs> concerned oh, yep man grim Hain, speaking of grim Hain, said evie and growlith because they are good boys very true are they accurate and are uh, they, uh yeah i don't know if they are and Yo, they're very good boys. good boy uh evie is definitely not a dog so it's evie's 100 percent a fox foxes can be good boys i don't know about that man I mean, can you pet the dog pointed out that you can't pet the dog in Link's Awakening, and it's definitely pretty much a fox, so... I mean, it's 100% a wolf, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's the wolf that you turn into later in Twilight Princess. There you go. Yes. There you go. Uh, yep. Midna's somewhere in there, you just don't know where. Uh, G. Pimpio says, a few things. Number one, I'm honored y'all picked my comment last week. Number two, I'm sorry Parker had to read my dumb name out loud. Number you three, had to read it twice this week. I like a hundred times. Number three, the twelve-year-old in me who made this dumb name was amused. Parker had to read my name out loud. <laughs> and number four, I'd bring a Bulbasaur and a Sunflora because she likes plants. I'm sorry. What was the, what was the name again? G Pimp Yo One. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Could you just repeat that uh, one more yeah, time? I think it was a G Pimp Yo One. <laughs> so there you go. That's what it is. And the last comment from last week, Crazy Derp says, to follow up the question about people eating Pokemon, do we think Pokemon eat humans in that world? 100%. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, there's are some you, scared Pokemon. Half of the dex entries are about how Pokemon murder people. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that would be really interesting. I'm sure somebody's done a video on it, but, like, what's the... Um, AJ, this is a video idea for you if you do a better job than I would on this. Like, like the Pokemon with the highest kill count of humans? Or yeah, or like <laughs> most dangerous to humans Pokemon or something along those lines. All like, of them. Like Almost without, all of them. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like some of them, you know, have worse tempers and stuff like a Tauros in, you know, as far as, I don't know, thing in Gen 1 or whatever, like would be more dangerous as far as it seems like it could probably, you know, decide to charge you more than something else would or something like that. So. Yeah, Spiros, they're real dangerous, as episode I, one showed us. <laughs> the mess up part is that, like, the top five would definitely be all of the insane galaxy brain evolution or uh, legendaries that are like, oh, I could demolish a city with my breath. But, like, <laughs> literally, most of the most innocuous Pokemon could definitely kill you if they wanted to. Like Magikarp. Yep. I mean, Yo, honestly. Uh, yeah. All Not things very serious. <laughs> all things considered, like even a Weedle with poison sting, like sure we've got antidotes for Pokemon against that, but like I don't know if we've got antidotes for people. So if you get poisoned by a poison sting, like that in itself, you just die. Or if that know. happened also, to you like, alone in the woods I, and nobody came across you, you just sit, stay there and die. <laughs> I think that the existence of Pokemon like made people evolve. 
because Ash <laughs> gets like thunder oh my bolted yes. and flamethrowered and like all of the above and he's fine he truly is that's so wow you make a good point well i think the answer though is that you look at ash right he's also been 10 years old for oh 20 my God, years I hate perhaps he's an immortal this. one i hate oh, it of course i hate that. all the answers coming <laughs> he's out. an old god you know what? He's a Pokemon League champion now. You know so. what? He's a Pokemon. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe we're all Pokemon. Um, it's that's good stuff. Why do you think Ash Green Ninja happened? He's half Pokemon. No. Oh. <laughs> There's yo, a video. He yo, yep. he tackled Lucario once. He was True. stupid for doing that, but he did it. <laughs> he tried to punch Mewtwo. That worked yo, out real well. Ash is always trying to fight some Pokemon. Oh, Maybe he is one. Good old Ash. He's a Pokemon there you for go. sure. <laughs> So then moving right along, we have a Q&A section. Uh, a couple different places you can do this. You can ask us questions on the YouTube community tab or on Twitter or on We've Discord. We've been in the Q&A section this whole Yeah, time. I know, but this is like the real, the real, you know, yeah. real Q&A. Mm -hmm. um, Falcon yeah. left just a good old spaghetti recipe. So, <laughs> so go check that, that out last week. For uh, Fanatics Foods, it's, uh, he's, you know, he's helping us out over there. How did he introduce it? Um, he didn't like... He said, Did he just drop, he just copy pasted yeah, the just, spaghetti recipe. He said, Who's ready for spaghetti? But it's spelled spaghetti with a Y. And he, then in parentheses, he said, Not actually spaghetti. And then a whole <laughs> recipe of things that, like, it seems kind of like it's definitely it's a pasta dish of some sort. And, uh, but it, it sounds really good too, though. And I'm pretty hungry. So, is this like a normal thing on your show that people send you yeah, recipes or is this guy just weird? Okay, so no, 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 there's, there's history to this. So Parker's real stupid, right? You, we've established this over the hours that we recorded this I mean, podcast. here we are, you know. Uh, yep. Uh, and Parker, I, I mean, I'm not running through the whole thing. He has dumb opinions on fruit. And uh, theoretically, he likes pears. Is is the, That's one the of quote. the two that you claim um, is dumb. The other one uh, is that raspberries are the best fruit. Is that right? No, he theoretically likes pears. I'll, here, let's oh, let's theoretically let, no, let's not. Okay, and then the fine. other thing is <laughs> no, that you gotta right? tell me now. I gotta know what the hell <laughs> what that's about. What, just, what it, real quick of it is that pears. <laughs> the taste is great. More often than not, the texture is not good. So like, I like pears the times that the texture turns out good, but so often it's not that I just don't even want to bother. So theoretically, I, respect I that, like pears. I respect that take. Yes. I'm, I'm not saying you on this, Parker. You were literally, you were literally the first person. The first person. It makes so has, much sense to me. Has, I got your back. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. I mean, nose rings, you know? That's that's what we got. You know what? Yeah, man. True. That's a good point. I've never Ooh. had a nose ring, so maybe that has a lot to do with my you, it, it's pain. the extra the extra hole in your nose. It really makes, you know, yeah. it makes it more aromatic. So, like, I the mean, texture is more I important. Mean, Technically, it makes you less sure on whether you like pears or not. Hey, just <laughs> like, don't even worry about I, it. We, we, we made progress here. Let's move when on. I, <laughs> when I think about liking a thing, I'm not like, I only like this thing when it's good. You know, like I'm, when I'm thinking of like, yeah, I like pizza if it's not burnt. Like who's who's going to add that? See, but you brought up pizza, though. <laughs> and have you had bad pizza, man? Yes. Like if you like. You go any all right. Go anywhere outside the tri-state area and have right. like a real pizza somewhere. It's garbage, yeah. and I'd rather yeah. not eat it. <laughs> yeah, and I agree. I agree. But if somebody asked me if I like pizza, I would say yes. And okay, that would just so, be so it. you're more you're more upset about the fact that he has a qualifier about like you. Yeah, it's like such a dumb qualifier because he's like, if it's not bad, then it's good. <laughs> No, you know what? what? I'm sticking with you, man. I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope people case, start sending me recipes now. Falcon, go send Pete some recipes because he needs some more recipes. <laughs> the other question on the YouTube community was from Lizdrin, who said, AJ, you've said, I like him. I want him on my team to more than six Galarian Pokemon at this point. If the Pokemon <laughs> we know about today were all the ones we were getting, who's actually on your team? All right, hold on. I gotta That's do a some fun question. Yeah, we gotta get a list. I gotta look. All right, up here's the, the answer: surfetched, surfetched, yep. surfetched, <laughs> surfetched, surfetched, and whatever Sobble evolves into. <laughs> yes, agreed on all counts. <laughs> oh, man, okay. honestly, I think I think it's really tough. Like I, for all the 
you know, drama around this game, which yeah. we don't need to get into that. <laughs> I think that this new batch of Pokemon is is really strong. I don't think there's been a weak design among them yet. Yep. All right, here's my here's my team. Sable, uh, Corviknight, uh, Duraludon, Duraludon, <laughs> What have him on here twice? Who's He's on IGN's list twice. Um, Surfetched, mm -hmm. Obstagoon. Uh, how much was That's that? That's five. So you far? got one more. Uh, hmm. See, this is where get Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Put one of the cute ones on there, like Wooloo or Roly Coley or something, just nah, to even it out. Like I'm not gonna keep Wooloo on my team, my team unless cute. it evolves into something dope. Yo, what if Wooloo turns into just a bad, bad Wait. sheep? <laughs> what if? <laughs> that mean Fuck you any wool um <laughs> but what if wooloo evolves into a wool or a sheep a wolf in sheep's clothing like it's a wolf oh my and it's just god. oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it evolves and a wolf bursts out of its chest like alien <laughs> run uh that would be so good it's just like a wolf wearing you know some sheep wool and stuff uh, realistically i'm probably going to have a whole bunch of like pokemon like, there's going to probably be, like, half of my Pokemon that are, like, Galarian Pokemon mm -hmm. and the other half that are not. So like, oh, I'm using 100% new boys. How dare you? How dare you not have Charizard on your team? <laughs> it's blasphemous. <laughs> Yo, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd have Blastoise, Blastoise from this. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I don't. Still, yes. Still. You know what? Get, get Max back on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow wow no, one joking. episode I'm you've either. turned on me <laughs> no you turned on me first with your <laughs> stupid agreement with stupid bear taste <laughs> what can i say i've uh, i'm very convincing no you're not <laughs> he's literally the first person that's agreed with that take <laughs> yo I'm just, I'm just, listen man you know parker sent me a lot of music for the podcast i owe him one that's okay. right <laughs> cash in those favorites <laughs> Yeah, you got like you wrote me like five theme songs. You got four favorites left. <laughs> yeah, that's all it really takes. I'm gonna start sending theme songs to uh, some very powerful people. I can't think of any examples. <laughs> oh man, uh, more questions from Twitter now. Falcon again, who sent us the recipe earlier, but now has some questions. Says has a question for each of us. AJ, what is your least favorite matchup in Ultimate so far? Doesn't necessarily have to be the most difficult. Uh, hmm. DDD. Mm. I hate fighting DDD. Not because mm. he's hard. Just because the online because people. Yeah, he, like, he, there's a flow chart to fighting him, and I hate it. <laughs> like, it, it's it's just like, uh, now I have to pay attention. It, it just annoys me that I have to pay attention and not make mistakes against a bad player. Mm. Like, that frustrates me. Yeah. Because, like, he's just the type of person, uh, the type of character that, like, you're not playing against him, you're playing against yourself. Yep. And it, I just don't like that. <laughs> Good stuff. Pete, question for you. What's your all-time favorite video game? This is a fun question. Uh, I, I My gut answer is Pokemon Silver. Uh, there, there are definitely plenty of games I could throw in contention there, but I think Gen 2 is, I think, probably the best Pokemon game, like, overall content-wise. Love the decks. Spent... <laughs> How probably five six hundred hours in it over the course of my lifetime first so. of all how dare you uh for <laughs> why, not why? Saying, why what do you got very, for me now <laughs> at the very least you could have said soul silver well because okay listen gen listen. two gen two mechanically just as not close as, as gen one and being garbage you know what i'm saying okay all right listen you know what i'm saying it's hear better. me out though hear me out though <laughs> <laughs> Hear me out, though. Garbage. Uh, so Pete's changing his answer, answer to Soul Silver. So That's here, I'll word. give you this. I'll give you this. Soul <laughs> Silver. I, I prefer the battle mechanics because Gen Four is, I think, my favorite from a battle perspective. Uh, however, the original has beautiful pixel art and chip tune, and that goes a long way with your boy. <laughs> I mean, Soul Silver has pixel art too. It's not as good though. It's that. It's that. DS pixel art where it's like there's too many pixels, all right? <laughs> <laughs> That's too many pixels. <laughs> Good stuff. And then Falcon's last question to me, uh, which is a much harder no, question than any of you guys. More questions, actually. Well, that's true. Um, he also said to grind or not to grind. 
Hashtag super tired bros. Uh, that's insider because we played Smash Bros. I've been playing Smash Bros. He's one of the people that's helping me grind in Smash Bros. Nice. Brothers. And yesterday we were playing Smash Brothers and we were like, it was like, I don't know, like 2 a.m. or something like that. <laughs> and then we were playing for like, I don't know, like two hours. Mm-hmm. Um, and then somebody else joined, there are two other people who joined the room and they're both trash, but we're sitting here and we're tired and we're playing against these people. And again, like almost like what I said with DDD, but it's like, I lost to this guy because of something stupid I did. And I was like, ah, like, this is just the worst. And then he DM'd me like before that, like during that match where he was like, am, am I the only one that's tired? And I was like, nah, me too. I'm doing one more rotation and I'm done. <laughs> nice. So to grind or not to grind? Uh, definitely to grind. There you go. Parker, what's your favorite candy bar? This is a hard question. I'm going to go with my gut and say Butterfinger, but there's a lot of good answers out All there, right. too. I'll also say um, this is a, a Europe exclusive one, Lion Bar. You can also get it like World Market here in the States, but um, it's got kind of like Rice Krispies stuff on the inside, and like it's like mm. chocolate, caramel inside with Rice Krispie, Dealy Bobs. Top notch. Yeah. Very, very, very Those good. Europeans... The arrows, they, they got you chocolate. hooked on that. <laughs> they got me hooked on those arrows, bro. You're, if you're a listener of the podcast, you know that Pixel sent me a... Uh, the first year I joined, like when the f- website started, so last year, he sent me a Christmas card, a Moonlighter, a copy of Moonlighter, and three British candies. I don't remember what the other two were because Arrow is the jam. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's good stuff. There's a bunch of candies that are over there. So for some context, Pete, I uh, I grew up in I lived in France for about 10 years and then lived in Belgium for like oh, six wow, years. I didn't know that. Yeah. So my parents are over in Belgium at the moment. So that's where I'm going back to in a little bit. But there's a bunch of candies that like I'll go over there and just I got to get some candies over there because you can't get them here. So you know what? Yeah. Also, our chocolate's Candy. trash. Yeah, that's very true. And honestly, like Bel- Belgian chocolate leg- legitimately is just amazing and not only that but like you can just get the cheapest chocolate over there and it's better than li- like pretty much any other chocolate over here unless you like spring for you know obviously name brand super fancy stuff which would still be imported stuff for the most part anyway most so, of it yeah, yeah right so all that said um man american candy is so all good. about the interiors yeah right Exactly, yeah. like pe- like peanut butter stuff, Reese's, and all that, Butterfinger, like that's... It's in, it's in the name notch. of preservation. It's like, hey, we want to keep this chocolate on the shelf for f- five years. I mean, yeah. So, like, <laughs> we're going to make it taste garbage <laughs> in the process. <laughs> but there'll be some fun stuff in there. Speaking of fun stuff, Max Wright. We we're all know Max Wright. Right. It's fun. Hey, I love Max. You know what? Never He's mind. great. Pete's on here, and I don't like him anymore, so Max is fun now. <laughs> Yo, all right. All right, let's see how it is. Max That's says, nice. oh, hey, guys, big fan. Love listening to the show every week. This question is actually aimed at Pete's, as, he's also, as I'm also a longtime listener of the podcast. Uh, so, Pete, what the hell's your problem, dude? <laughs> yeah, I want to know the answer to that question, too. I've, I've got an answer for you, Max. I said it to you on Twitter, and I'll say it again. You're my problem. <laughs> all right? There you go. We got some, got some fire up in here. Uh, but then he says, nah, you know, I've always got a real question. Come on now. Switch Lite is out tomorrow, so I want to know if there are games that you think would be better on Switch Mini than standard Switch, or if there are any games that would be worse on the Switch Lite due to its size. Fire Emblem. I don't think any game would be better. Oh, Fire (laughs) Emblem's a good one. I played that almost entirely docked, and it's the only game I've done that with. No, 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 no. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. (laughs) Uh, 2D platformers would be better. better. Oh, that's, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on, if you're playing handheld either one, Yes, those would be 100% better. Yeah, um, D-pad. Even, even unless you have like a SN30 Pro or something like that, even docked. Mm-hmm. Because the D-pad is not great on the Pro Controller. Shout out to the SN30 Pro, though. That thing is rad. I love that <laughs> D-pad. Yeah. I, I play exclusively with the Joy-Con, and I don't use the D-pad on the Joy-Con for literally anything except for like in Breath of the Wild with, you know, menu navigations kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, even with platformers like Super Mario Maker, Hollow Knight, Celeste, all that stuff, I just use the joystick and it works Stick fine. Foot. Whatever, you know, it's just the, that's where we are. You should be ashamed of yourself <laughs> and you should get Ashley's yellow switch light to, to write this one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, yeah, I think, yeah, go for it. I was say, the only games I think will definitely be worse are like games that are intended to be multiplayer. Like mm-hmm. I smash. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, you're not going to play mul- you, like playing multiplayer smash on that screen would be rough. 
uh, Mario Super Mario Party. I don't know about that. Like, I'll still, I'll still just hey, uh, hashtag Smash Bros Challenge. I'll play. I'll beat you and Smash Brothers with the Switch Lite. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole challenge. <laughs> That's the challenge. <laughs> You're ch- okay. I like it. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, multiplayer ones, obviously, like, I mean, obviously, 1-2 Switch, Mario Party, any of that kind of stuff, because you need to buy the extra peripherals of the Joy-Con at that point, that would suck. But um, other than that, yeah, I think games that are smaller or, like, have small writing would be a pain. Like, again, Fire Emblem was specifically the one, because that one, just the typeface was so small. And I, I loved yeah. the game, but so hard to read a lot of that stuff. Or, like, so, Doom, similar mm, kind of thing. yeah. It's just like some of the text is just too small. I haven't played Doom, so I didn't even know there was much text at all. (laughs) But I believe much. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So there you go. Um, Good question. In any case, Max, thank you very much for asking. John Francis says, what kind of pots? uh, Where are or sorry? Why are there pots full of loot? Kidding. Have you played Zelda before? Exactly. How many pots did you guys uh, break? Oh my god, man! I don't, I don't. It's like incalculable at this point. <laughs> so many. Pots. It's like that's like asking how many turtles has Mario crushed to death. I want them. I want there to be like a mechanic in the next Breath of the Wild where you go in like a pot enthusiast uh-huh. house, and that could mean several different things. True. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're like, like because the double meaning of, enth- of enthusiast, right? That's, yes. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, so like, you know how there's that lady, if you step on her flower, she freaks out oh, on you if you do it too much. Best. I want there to be a thing where it's like you break a certain amount of pots and they just like lose their mind every time you come near them. Yep. Turns, it turns into the most powerful boss in the game. <laughs> yeah. Just like keep track of how many pots people break come and make it like a, like a Dragon Ball GT situation uh-huh. where it's like they've retconned it and they're like, Hey, you wished on the Dragon Balls too much. That was real <laughs> bad, dude. Uh, now we're going to turn into evil things and fight you. There really weren't, come to think of it, like, I can think of a couple places with pots in Breath of the Wild, but, like, literally, the only one that I can think of off the top of my head was in, I mean, I guess there was a ton of stuff you could break, so there would be stuff in, like, barrels or whatever, but there were pots coming into the Temple of Time just on your right, because I remember like it, those. Though, I think. Yeah, that's the only ones that I can, like, think of off the top of my head that are legitimately pots and not, like, barrels or something else. Super curious now. I need to go back and I actually think play the game. Other, I think there's other pots that are like, like pots, like pottery. Pots. Yeah, right. I guess they fit yeah, in better like, to the world. Yeah. Yeah, but like the pot in the Temple of Time is like the Zelda pot that we yeah, totally yeah. ripped off for our logo. Yep. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> so, but John Francis' real question is Would y'all have Bob Wolf on as a guest sometime? Also, when you can't sleep, what do you do? My thing is watching podcasts and episodes explaining how to drink whiskey. I'm weird. <laughs> um, we've had well, but has Bob been on the? He's been on the podcast since you've I been on. I don't think right? so, actually. He hasn't. No, I mean we've been on there since I've been here, but yeah. I don't think he's been on. Maybe maybe I he was he with you one week when I was out. I mean he's absolutely been on the podcast, yeah. but I don't know if he's been on when you were on. I feel like he was, but I guess I'm wrong on that. We've say? had Bob on the podcast at least what three times? Sure. At I know for sure at least twice, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure we had him on three cool. times. Uh, but sure, we'll have him on again. See, the thing, again, about this podcast, I don't know if I said this on or off air, but I'm really bad at inviting people to be on the podcast because I just assume that if they want to be on it, they'll tell me. Yep. <laughs> you know? Like, Yo, and then I, when we come on, you tell us that you hate us. So <laughs> no, I thought no, we no, were, no, you no. know, I thought that we had a burgeoning friendship. That just applies, that just applies to you and Max. Because uh, Max is mean to me. And you broke my heart by agreeing with Parker and being literally the only person to ever do that. Ever. <laughs> I've got, you know. Oh, and Eric Henley, but he doesn't count because he's not on the podcast. He's just in the comment. <laughs> I see you, Eric. Um, yeah, there you go. Who's that? Bob, uh, we'll have him back on sometime, I guess. We'll see. What do you guys do when you can't sleep? I just sleep. Uh, <laughs> you're lucky. That's what? blessed. <laughs> Yeah, for I've I've always had trouble sleeping, and especially since college, uh, I I have this issue a lot of times where when I go to lay down, like my brain starts doing this thing where it's like, oh, hey, why don't you like just worry about every single thing that you could possibly have to do tomorrow? 
So in that scenario, I'll generally put on like like a TV show that I've seen a million times that I can just tune out and like distract myself enough to fall asleep. But nine, nine. I what was that? I said nine nine. Heck yes, <laughs> Brooklyn Nine Nine is a great choice. Yeah, it is. Um, but. Uh, for me, I, I've adopted the golden rule and I recommend anyone do this. If you ever lay down and you spend more than 20 minutes laid down trying to go to sleep, get up and go do something else. Cause that's like, that's how you train your brain that it's okay to do things in your bedroom other than sleep. If you get in the mindset of mm, bedroom right. is the sacred dome for sleep and lovemaking, that's when you're going to start sleeping better. <laughs> Facts. There you go. Um, I don't have that problem because I generally don't like need to go to sleep. So like I go to sleep when I'm tired. Oh, I don't right, yeah. need to go to sleep. Scheduling wise, you mean you don't like have. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like uh, I don't usually have to get up at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So like I'll just if I'm tired, I'll sleep. If I'm not, I won't. God, I miss that so <laughs> much. Yep. So, I mean, that's how it is. The only problem that I do have is like. I, I don't sleep enough, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is the main thing where it's like, okay, I went to sleep at five. I'm back up at seven. <laughs> I'm up. The sun's up. So I'm not going back to sleep. That's not going to happen. My body doesn't work like that. Dude, so I, like, again, I miss the ability to do that for <laughs> years. I, I got by on five or less hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like an old man. And I'm like, if I stay up too late playing video games, I wake up the next morning and immediately just like, it's like, stare at the ceiling, scream at the top of your lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why did I do this? Indeed. To be fair, I don't really like it, and except for on Tuesdays. On Tuesdays, it's useful, because I still got video stuff to do. So, like, being up and just, that's it, that's good. Mm -hmm. But any other day where it's like, I don't have to do this. <laughs> Why am I up? It's annoying, but... It lets me be more productive, I guess. That's what's up. So, John Francis, hopefully some of that helps you. And uh, obviously, if you're drinking whiskey, then... Because this is John Francis was also the one that asked the question about... Or he said Breath of the Wild was his first AAA. So, it sounds like either he's drinking whiskey young or isn't drinking it and just watching videos about it, or he's been around for a while. So, I'm very curious about all the other games like we were saying before. Definitely let us know. I need answers to these questions. <laughs> Bianca Wicks asks us. I mean, to be fair, he specifically said explaining how to drink whiskey. This is true. You're not wrong. So I don't. I don't know if that necessarily means that he's drinking it. <laughs> Maybe he's just preparing for when he's all the other. That's, that's just like his version of ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> like I just want. I just want to watch a bearded hipster tell me about whiskey. No, I don't it's know. His, it's you know how like before the switch came out, people were like like the reason why channels like ours exist is because everybody wanted to know what the next switch right, accessory yeah. looked like like and they just binge watch everything where it's like oh a new switch mold leaked here's mm -hmm. a six minute video talking about an amazon page you know yeah uh maybe that's what it's like maybe he's like just so excited for being 21 i'll tell <laughs> you this i'll bet you anything that if he's watching a youtube channel about whiskey that the the person talking about it is probably a dude who looks like me or parker <laughs> Just like, ah, oh, yes, I have a beard and wear flannel. Let me tell you about whiskey. I, too, used to play in a rock and roll band. My you know parent, my dad especially is like a whiskey aficionado. It's fine. Okay, so slight tangent, and then we'll get into the last questions. We're almost done here, but um, slight tangent. Growing up, so again, when we were in France, like drinking wine, not a big deal. And so also, my dad's a pastor, so that for some context there. But like wine... Cool, you know, that's just regular. But for some reason, I had the idea that, like, beer is for alcoholics. <laughs> and so <laughs> then we moved to the States. We were there. I don't know why. I have no idea. I think it was just the, like, I just didn't know anybody that drank beer because I was nine and wasn't aware of that. So we moved to the, mm. to the U.S. for about two years, moved to Belgium, and Belgium is very famous for beer. So my parents started drinking beer, you know, at some point there. So within a couple <laughs> of weeks, like, you were like devastated. I, yeah, I looked like, in the oh fridge one day and I was like, Whoa. there's beer in here. Like, what is this? My parents are alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean? hundred percent not the case or anything, but you know, like I just didn't you know that was an intervention. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, whatever. And so, but like yeah, you're now, drinking beer, but there was one Christmas. Uh, so my dad got into whiskey and all that. And like, has been to, uh, what's that place in, that Ron Swanson really loves in uh, oh oh love, uh, Lagavulin yes Lagavulin like yeah. they went to there and stuff in in Scotland or wherever that is and you know 
stuff. But there was one year that my mom found this like um, l really cool liquor cabinet thing that looks like it's a bookcase, but it opens up and it's actually a liquor, liquor cabinet. And so she was like, that's good. That's like his main Christmas present. She found it like a, you know, flea market kind of thing, but it was still kind of expensive. And so a lot of his other presents leading up to that were alcohol type things. And he was like, what do you think I am? Like, why are all of my presents? Like he was kind of like distraught. About it. He was like, what's going on? Like, why? Where's just something it's normal? Like, where do I have a drinking problem? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, that was a funny Christmas. That was probably, is this a really <laughs> passive aggressive <laughs> intervention? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, but yeah, so that was, that was a pretty funny time moving along. All that stuff said, uh, Bianca Wicks says, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Uh, Belgium, apparently. <laughs> I, I uh, I'm pretty sure she's hanging out in. Uh, oh man, what? She's with Reggie, and his and, and his new chair. Hang on, I while can't he's remember teaching this class. What's the city in Mario Odyssey called? Um, the City Kingdom. New Donk City. New Donk city? city. Thank you. So oh, goodness, uh, she's in New Donk City, singing about uh, some people that she used to know, and uh, it's Pauline. It's surprise. It's been the same person the whole time. <laughs> For me, uh, I'm going to guess that she's at Koholin Island. <gasps> oh, oh, we'll find out tomorrow. Dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And now the last questions are from Discord, uh, the other place that you can ask us questions on. Grim Hain asks a couple of short ones. He says, Stadia claims it's sold out in EU. What do you think are the chances that they set the stock low? Uh, I don't, I don't know what low means to them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't... Uh, that's the kind of thing... That works really well for toys and less good for consumer tech. Like, <laughs> I definitely get the idea of like creating an artificial shortage so you can say that it's sold out. But for something that's like unproven, I feel like you probably want to get as many units in people's hands as possible so that you can have the narrative that it's good. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I think you you could be onto something, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't definitely bet money on that one. Especially yeah. the fact I, I that mean, it's in Europe, which usually isn't like a super strong video game seller i mean yeah, it's not that like, it's not but like it's... to date france probably sold like five hundred thousand switches no i think <laughs> like, I mean, france is the biggest i think besides the uk i think france is the number two um as far as switch sales but i think it's like it's yeah, somewhere in the like I still two million it's like, or something yeah, like that which like is like a lot but it's still not you know it's definitely skewed if you're looking at nintendo stuff because nintendo yes. is like like historically underserved Europe. Yeah. So yeah. it's like PlayStation is a way more dominant brand yeah. in mm -hmm. the UK and beyond than Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you're in Europe, let us know about all like what the talk around Stadia and all that kind of stuff is. Cause I'd be curious cause I could see if they're going to set stocks low anywhere, that seems like an easy place to do it. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah especially cause like, I don't know how good internet is across Europe. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, in, like, countries like the UK and Germany, they've got, you know, the same kind of speeds that we do. But, like, that that could also be a contributing factor. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, next question. Streams when? Question marks. Frowny face. Uh, by the time Pokemon comes out, uh, hopefully sooner, but I doubt it. I, the, the main thing is trying to figure out this audio setup. And I'm supposed to be figuring that out with Bob. And the next time I'm like definitely going to be like, there's always like random times where it's like, hey, I got to go to New York for mm -hmm. insert X. Uh, but the next definite time I'm going to be in New York is in November. Uh, so we're supposed to troubleshoot like what's going on. Is on it my the computer. audio set up to figure out? Because I one weird thing to me seems to be the whole like being able to hear the game as well as being able to hear. I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Just streaming is really hard, guys. Yes. <laughs> just, just the audio. The it's audio not problem, easy. <laughs> the audio problem that I'm having is specifically with like Discord. Oh, gotcha. Because like a lot of the stream problems that I, I mean, a lot of the stream plans that I have involve streaming with Bob or streaming with MDB right. or you know, like streaming with other people. Yep. So like, it would be useful if people can hear them also on our stream you yeah. know like because i could always do like what i do in minecraft where it's like we do the multi-stream and then they just listen to their audio mm -hmm. but i would rather have like a turnkey solution yeah. to just real, be able real to quick i will suggest you look into Lightstream. Lightstream is a really really good uh third party thing that we used when we did um our nintendo direct watch along for the for e3 Nice. So uh, it's a you can like have everybody log in and stuff and it's 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 pretty good. It's like 
and a whole other back end you need to figure out, but it does make streaming with multiple remote people a lot easier. Nice. Okay. So check it out. We'll talk about that right after we're done because <laughs> i'm interested <laughs> the next question from graham Payne is maybe a parker stream question mark um and Beth parker that is a question for me for sure uh the main two hurdles for that would be a equipment because i have a capture card but it's not one that has any kind of pass through uh, so that's a thing but then also the just time because i got a full-time job and a wife and do my videos and stuff over here so it would be very random times but yep maybe eventually would be great so we will see on that and then the last question from Graham Hain says Calvin and Hobbes or Garfield you will be judged on the answer you give this is if, if anyone says answer Garfield <laughs> go <laughs> jump off a bridge if you say Garfield over Calvin and Hobbes Garfield is trash now uh when I was a child I used to think Garfield was hilarious Yo, even even peak Garfield is not even close to the worst Calvin and Hobbes strip. I mean, Calvin, yeah, I agree. I mean, the thing is, Bill Watterson also like he specifically stopped Calvin and Hobbes when he was like, I think I'm out of ideas, and then he stopped, and that's amazing. Like that's nobody does that, and that's so good. So I think like in you know, yeah. That that said, the worst Calvin and Hobbes just can't be that bad all things considered it's so good no. i i i dressed up as spaceman spiff for 10th grade halloween yes. i think <laughs> yo oh my god it's so good that's awesome yeah yeah uh, calvin and Hobbes is the gold standard by which all other comic strips yep. are judged agreed so it's good stuff last question of all of them is from Max. And this is the one we teased that we were going to talk about earlier. Uh, he said, loot pots. What's that? Just kidding. That's not the question. <laughs> he said, Pokemon Sword and <laughs> Shield. I've asked you guys to come up with some Galarian forms on the show before, and you did a great job. Now we're going for the sequel. I want AJ, Parker, and Pete to pick one Pokemon that doesn't have an evolved or pre-evolved forms and come up with a Galarian exclusive evolution. Show your working. To make it easier, I've even put a list together of non-legendary Pokemon without evolutions. Now, allow me to just pull the pin out of what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, do it. <laughs> so, when I went back and reviewed the original 151 Pokemon, aside from Farfetch, there are only two Pokemon remaining who have not had any kind of evolution, pre-evolution, or mega evolution. And that mm. is Tauros and Lapras. And what about Pinsir and Kangaskhan? Pinsir and Kangaskhan both have megas. So oh, I don't think it's of course, it's, yes. Not not unheard of to say yep. that they could have an evolution, yep. but I think that that makes it far less likely in my mind. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Forgot about that. Something that's weird. Uh, Miltank and Tauros are grouped together all the time. Mm. Yep. Like, if you catch a Miltank and a Tauros and Sun and Moon in your Pokedex, it shows them as like a completed evolutionary line. Interesting. <laughs> That's strange. I know. I know that in uh, Gen Two, when they introduced breeding, Tauros and Miltank were both in the handful of Pokemon that were only available as either male or female, mm. and they were like always kind of looked at as like a pair like that as huh. well back then. Yeah. So, and even that is like weird because Pokemon don't work in that way, where it's like <laughs> right. you can no. only breed a Lapras with a Lapras. Yeah. It's like if you have. Uh, Pokemon in the in the dragon and monster egg group, you can breed them, you know, like that, that sort of thing. That stuff have, like, is it, like talk about yeah. galaxy brain, like that, <laughs> like it gets deep and weird. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of <laughs> Lapras, though, that's that is the one that I thought of for this. Um, I a I Galarian was, form, a Galarian form specifically that's even more tailored to like the Loch Ness kind of yes. lore. Yeah. So uh, longer neck, uh, maybe a sleeker shell, like gets rid of some of the pointies of it and stuff like that. And is like maybe water and dark type because, you know, it's Ooh. like, you know, you don't find because Loch Ness is always in the dark and like you can't find it and stuff like that. So it's got some like under undergroundy type powers and that kind of. You know, it would be cool sense. if it was a psychic type and it like you it like erased that. memory anytime anybody <laughs> saw it. Man, or something like that. Yes, that would be amazing. That could be cool. So that's my guess, or not guess, but uh, wish or something is, uh, yeah, going with, uh, you know, Galarian, British, blah, 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 that whole thing. Give me like a like a calligraphy version of unknown that doesn't suck. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, unknown now is garbage. <laughs> so 
my mind, um, it, it, I would like Tauros. I think it's like, let's get some love to Tauros. Tauros, I don't think there's a Pokemon that has had a worse fall from grace. Because yeah. Tauros in Gen 1 is objectively, like, one of the best competitive Pokemon, except for, like, Mewtwo. Right. Mm. And ever since then, just, like, nothing. Nothing like, for the guy. Have him on your yeah. team. <laughs> so, like, let's get a Tauros. But I don't know, like, what would be a British Tauros? You know, like I don't, I don't know what that looks like. Uh, go with uh, Mad Cow Disease. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind, never mind. I got it, I got it. Okay, go. It's for a it. Tauros, right? But instead of the, you know, how he has the three tails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all tea bags. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Tiros. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Perfect. Perfect. Nailed it. Oh man. Uh, and also Lapras, I think just a simple evolution name, Lap Lapress, like E S S, and it's like Loch Ness or Ness, but that that sounds kind of gross. Yeah, <laughs> Lap Ness sounds gross. <laughs> just less. Yep. <laughs> what up, less? <laughs> yeah, just you know, getting some tea that from T Rose. Like first of all, form. Yeah, I'm trying to think for some of these other ones. Um, yeah, who else did he list? Okay, so he's got a, long list. a whole <laughs> lot of them. So Kangaskhan, Pinsir, Tauros, Lapras, Ditto, Unknown, Giraffe Rig, Dunsparce, Quillfish, Shuckle, Corsola, Delibird, Skarmory, Stantler, Smeargle, Miltank, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A bunch more. So he threw he threw out a bunch there. Uh, Delibird would be awesome because like talk about useless bird Pokemon that get like awesome evolutions. Like let's go, that would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> Something where yeah, I mean like. Because he's got, like, a bag and stuff. He just pulls out a shield of it, and then you got a shield Pokemon. Like, there's no reason for him to have a shield in it, but yeah. what else does he have in that bag? I, we don't know. It could be a shield, for all we know. And some of these are, like, cheats. Yeah. It's, it's worth like, pointing out, too, he did. He mentioned Ditto. I forgot to mention yeah. that Ditto doesn't have an evolution, True, but I right. don't think Ditto having an evolution makes any sort of sense. No. Right. What would that even look like? Yeah. You know, Which like, was always why I, I think, thought like, Porygon Voltom and Porygon is... 2 was a weird thing. I was like, that's... All right. See whatever. that I like because he's software and he's getting updated. That's I okay. Love that. That's true. Yeah. I forgot about I that. I think that makes sense. I think Rotom is along the same lines as Ditto because it kind of does already have evolved forms. Yeah. Yeah. It's got it's got forms. So like yeah. again, I, I don't think it makes sense to have a Pokemon that has, or it's like uh, Cast Form is like that. Like Cast yeah, Form right. doesn't have an Cast evolution. Cast Form's also on here, but he changes. So like you don't need that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I as far as other ones. I think that's I think the main like, one that I can think of. Is I think I've heard if there's they a, do there's a rumor where, like, that we're gonna get a. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, AJ. I think if they do anything with Soul Rock and Lunatone, they need to do like a fusion situation mm. instead of evolving them individually. That'd be cool. Like they fuse. I'm kind of surprised that they didn't get any kind of love in Pokemon Sun and Moon. It's like, what yeah, you kidding me? That was weird. Absolutely. There's a sun and a moon. <laughs> yeah. Very weird. Yep. Yeah, one of the rumors I, I think that came out from that same leak that we talked about earlier was that there's going to be a Galarian Chatot who's going to yeah. be electric uh, normal and have like a, an ability that like it's like an amplifier or something like that. Like, it's That's, called that could be fun. Auto Tune. Is auto Tune, the that was the one. Yeah. Right, yeah. I still, that could be cool. And I still like, I mean, outside of this, we talked about it before. Actually, we talked about it when Max was on. Um, uh, having like. A very traditional, I don't know, like white lion and um, unicorn kind of thing, which again, yeah, Rapidash is like a little bit unicorny or something, but mm. a white lion and unicorn that are like the whole crest, you know, like yeah. doing that whole bit, um, I That'd think would make sense and be cool. But honestly, those would have made more sense you as like what? legendaries, but man, whatever. I wasn't going to say anything about this, but I talk. I'm starting the talks with Justin to make another Pokemon forms video because we did the uh, we did uh, like so Sino forms uh -huh. of the Pokemon a while ago, mm. um, and I want to do it again, but for for Galarian Pokemon, nice. and I we're like in the stages of figuring out which Pokemon we want to do. So. If you guys have any. Uh, suggestions you guys, for that. The two of us or the anybody. The community. Let nice. me know. Leave them in the comments. You guys can suggest them. If anything's cool, I'll let them know to Justin, mm -hmm. and then we'll you know what, flesh it out, and we'll get our heads together and talk it out, yep. and then I'll write it into a script, and it'll be a video like early November. <laughs> Speaking of all that too, um, Pete, where can they find you on all this stuff? You've got. All sorts of places. Go ahead and plug those before we tell people to leave. 
I'm all over the internet. So yeah, quickly before you leave, uh, if you want to connect with me on the web, you can find me at loud underscore Pete on Twitter and Instagram. I'd appreciate the follow. Uh, if you want to keep up with all the stuff I'm doing, uh, you can also visit um, loopots.com and check out uh, our own podcast, The Potscast, uh, which uh, Max is actually on this week, too. So if you heard Max in a previous episode and some reason want to hear more from him, you can go hear our conversation about Surf Edge I this week. I will stand up for Max. Um, <laughs> he's a good kid. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can get us on YouTube, Twitch, yeah. like, you know how to do video stuff. We're you know, loot pots all over the place. We've got a great discord community. You can support us on Patreon, all that other stuff. Uh, and if you liked our conversation about Calvin and Hobbes and want to hear me talk more about comics, you can go check out my other podcast, the comics pals. Uh, we're all over the place. SoundCloud's probably the best place or the comics pals.com. Uh, so go check that stuff out and mm-hmm. I appreciate it. As Thanks for having me on guys. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Thanks for being I wonder if it'd be it. worthwhile to have, um, will from like will wolf on the comics pals at some point too. Cause just cause we were, I don't know. That's a thought for after the things, but I mean, hey, if you he's want me big to, into comics and stuff, I can make a connection, man. I'd love to. Yeah, fun times. Cool. Well, you I'll know what, you guys? Know. That's about it from us. Uh, yeah, leave some comments down here below. Like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell all your friends. Um, and again, if you're listening on podcast services, review the uh, the things because that helps us out. So the more people can hear and be part of the community and talk, and you can go into the Discord and it won't just like sometimes not have anybody talking in there, but there's always going to be someone talking there if there's enough people <laughs> i don't know how that works yeah. maybe <laughs> yeah. yeah sure who's to say all right that's it from us bye everybody goodbye see ya